Welcome to the Belgrade Individual Ada International Pool World Championships 2018. We are back here today, the third day of our competition, and this is the final day of qualifying heats. Today's event is called Static Apnea. In this particular discipline, the athlete is judged on time of pure breath hold. This is the only event that we have in all of freediving competition, which is based on time only. Uh, the athlete does not move. In fact, the athlete tries to stay as still and relaxed as possible. This has nothing to do with distance, as do all of the other uh, disciplines that we have in freediving. So today, you'll be seeing our, our athletes with a coach in the water for the first time as well. The coach is there to, to uh, assist the athlete, uh, to help them with knowing what time it is, how much time has passed since the beginning, and so and to try to keep them relaxed. Athletes have different ways that they uh, try to stay relaxed. Some, some of them uh, may sing to themselves or count or recall things. Others completely try to let everything go from their mind and just be as quiet and as uh, carefree as possible, uh, getting into somewhat of a meditative state. So we're getting close to beginning here and let me read you today's competitors in, in this first heat that we have. In lane A is Hans Jürgen Lenzen from Germany. His personal best is 5 minutes and 51 seconds. In lane B Matt Melina, Matus Melina from Poland. His personal best is 8 minutes and 43 seconds. Lane C is Lisa Borg from Australia, 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Lane D, Robin, Robin Gunnarsson from Sweden, 6 minutes and 30 seconds. E, Yasuku Ozeki from Japan, 5 minutes 1 second. And in lane F, Kayuko Oshiro of Japan, the personal best of 5 minutes and 44 seconds. You can see the athletes there, and in, in a, this particular discipline, you see that the judges are seated. That's because the athletes aren't moving, so there's no reason to run up and down the side of the pool as you've seen them do the last two days. They are seated, and they will just be watching the athletes to make sure that their head remains submerged the entire time. And once their head comes up, that's when the time will stop. Uh, these can be rather long breath holds, as you heard me mention. In this particular heat, Matus Molina does almost nine minutes. So that's why the judges are seated as well, because this is a rather um, slow process. And uh, you'll, you'll be interested to see that, uh, how the athletes do this, how they can get themselves into the state of relaxation and attempting to get their heart rate lowered in order to conserve oxygen. Um, when one is nervous and your heart is beating fast, you burn more oxygen, which means you cannot hold your breath as long. In this discipline, um, training consists of a lot of relaxation and just learning how to work with the feelings that you go through in your body with the uh, oxygen deprivation and the natural reactions which recur uh, occur in your diaphragm and, and in your organs for the desire to the body to naturally take a breath. You can hear the countdown now. The athletes are getting ready. There they go. So the time begins as soon as the airway is submerged. So as soon as the mouth hits the water, the judge will start the stopwatch. And now the judge will watch them the entire time to make sure that they don't lift their head up or try to breathe. Once the head comes up, then they will hit the stopwatch and the time will stop. The coach is allowed to touch the athlete for positioning or for relaxation, but they are not allowed to hold them up or, or keep, them, keep, them, um, keep their airway submerged or anything like that. But they are there to assist them. They have special blocks that they have built so that they can stand up in the pool because the pool is too deep to stand 
So these blocks that they stand on have been built and they're uh, metal and they're stable so that they don't fall off. But it's important to be comfortable when you do this for the coach and for the athlete. So they have started now and as you can see, there they are. There's a, there's a, a picture there of, that's Robin Gunnarsson from Sweden and he's trying to be relaxed. They wear a thicker wetsuit in this, this particular discipline because they tend to get cold. As your heart rate slows down, uh, your body temperature goes down as well. And you want to stay as relaxed as possible. You don't want your body to be trying to generate energy in order to stay warm. So they'll be wearing a, a heavier wetsuit and many of them have a hood on as well uh, to keep warm. The pool temperature we've been told is about 24 degrees. So naturally that is less than what our body temperature is at 98, so you would be getting cold. Uh, Alesh, who has been my co-host the last two days, uh, told us that he wears a five millimeter suit. Five millimeters refers to the thickness of the suit. Suits go from less than one mil millimeter to up to over seven, and for really cold dives that, uh, that people do in, uh, with scuba tanks, they have dry suits as well but we don't use those at all in free diving. Uh, so I don't know what all the athletes are wearing in particular here, but I do know they will be wearing a warmer suit than what they've been wearing the last two days. In the dynamic events, it's more important to be hydrodynamic and fast, so a thick suit is, is more buoyant as well, so they don't tend to wear as thick as suits in that. We have some um, very seasoned athletes competing in this, uh, in Matt Molina, of course, he is uh, a world champion in two events, both dynamic events. He's very good in, sta in this static apnea as well, uh, which isn't uh, surprising because he obviously has to be good at holding his breath if he can do those long swims in the pool. So he's uh, very good at this. He's a no warm-up diver. He doesn't get in the water until the last minute and then he holds his breath. Uh, you can see Willie Hoffman there. He is the coach for uh, his, his German uh, friend. His, he has just come up. That is Hans Jürgen Lenson. He is an older athlete. Uh, he was telling me yesterday he feels like the senior athlete. There's Lisa Borg. She has just come up. She's from Australia, President Aid Australia. She's giving her protocol. It's the same protocol as we do in the other two events. They must remove their goggles, give the OK sign, and say, I am OK. The coach is not allowed to touch them to help them do that, but they can verbally set, give them cue, cues to remind them to remove the goggles and say the proper uh, I am OK and give the OK sign. Uh, one can get somewhat confused uh, when you're holding your breath and when you first come up to take that air so the coach is there to try to help you um, straighten out your thoughts and perform the protocol correctly. You can see the Japanese competitor here is is starting to feel the effects of the breath hold. You can you can see them see that movement in the back there? Those are diaphragm contractions. That means there's a this kind of a heaving that goes on because of your body is wanting to tell you to breathe and your, your head is telling you that you're not supposed to breathe. Now the judge will look and bend over and, and look carefully to make sure that the mouth is still under the water, but you can see here the pain that this athlete is going through with these diaphragm contractions. This is extremely uncomfortable. It is something that during training you have to learn how to deal with and it is not easy. Um, you can see some results that have already come up from Lisa and Hans Jürgen. So Hans Jürgen did three minutes and 24 seconds. Here's a protocol here on a Japanese athlete. Looks good. Breathing to come back to, to be uh, normal again. So Hans Jürgen, as I said, three minutes, 24 seconds. Lisa, Lisa Borg did three minutes and 30, 31 seconds. This is within range of what they've been doing previously. Uh, it looks like Hans Jürgen, though, had, has previously done more, but it's extremely difficult in these circumstances at the World Championships to not be nervous. And if you're nervous, it's really difficult to do static apnea. 
uh, nerves is one of the things that is really uh, taxing on breath hold because you're 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 just you're tense and you're burning oxygen and you just can't hold your breath as long, and you suffer those contractions sooner, and uh, it's just quite difficult. So Yasuko from Japan has come in at five minutes and five seconds. And Kayuko Oshiro was 5 minutes and 24 seconds. Waiting to see the, the card, though, that has not been posted yet, whether that was a valid performance or not. The judges have to consider many things to make sure that the protocol was done correctly, and then they will issue the card. You can see Matt Molina is still going, still continuing. He has, he's now at 6 minutes and 45 seconds. If this is a typical performance for Matt, he may still go for an additional two minutes, but he'll have to decide how long he wants to go, what he believes is necessary to make the finals. The whole goal here is to make the finals, and uh, so he will try to decide what the minimum performance he can do, try to conserve energy because he'll be doing a big swim tomorrow in dynamic no fence. And he has to decide how much energy he wants to exert today for this. You can see he's starting to feel some contractions. This is, this is getting to be difficult. And, and you can imagine at 7 minutes and 25 seconds, this is a very long time to hold your breath. And it's, it's just not something that he, it is easy. Believe me, it is not easy. It takes a lot of training to be able to get to this level. You can try practicing at home, sitting on your sofa, just holding your breath for 30 seconds can seem, seem beyond possible. So these, these competitors have been, been doing this for a long time to get to this level. Matt is coming up on eight minutes now, which is, there are very few people in the world who can do eight minutes in this, in this uh, discipline, in static apnea. So over eight minutes, Matt is still down. As you can see on our, our board here today, our results, all of our athletes have received white cards. That's an excellent start. We love to see white cards. We don't like to see disqualifications. Matt is still continuing. He's now at 8 minutes and 20 seconds, coming up on 8.30. Looks like Matt is not trying to uh, hold, hold back too much there. He's going to put his feet down. He's, getting, he's thinking about coming up. Unfortunately, now we're kind of blocked. There he is. All right. Gives the OK sign. He's perfectly fine. That didn't seem difficult. That's 8 minutes and 31 seconds. He probably had planned all along exactly what he wanted to do. Maybe he was thinking about 8.30 as his number today. And there he is. But he's, he's, he looked perfectly fine. That was not difficult for him. Strong protocol. He should be fine with that. Unless the judges saw something that we couldn't see from our angle. But it looks to me like that should be a white card for Matt. So. Have, he chose to go early. He put down as his, um, there he is, he's fine. Uh, so he'll be happy with that. The way that they do the order of the performances is by the announcement of how long they say they're going to hold their breath. They don't have to hold it for the, for the time they say. They don't have to predict it. But they put down an announcement and that, that places that places them in the proper order. And so Matt only announced one second. He obviously had an intention of doing much more than one second. And every athlete in this first heat, and most of them in the second heat, have also put down one second. They did that because they wanted to go early. That's why. Uh, they wanted to go early and get it over with and be done for the day. So. That is desirable to some people. Other people would rather go later and see how the other athletes are performed and make their decision based on um, comparison times rather than just trying to go and, and, and get it over with and do it fast. But uh, Matt may feel, as these other athletes that all announced one second, that they get too nervous as they wait and they uh, want to just get it done. So and Matt, of course, is very confident and uh, has been for, for quite some time. So he didn't have any issues. So we'll be coming up now. You can see the results there. Matt Molina, of course, in first place. I, I think he'll be in first place for some time. I don't, uh, you know, we could have a surprise. But the, the other competitors that can challenge Matt are coming later today. 
and of course Alish, who has been my co-host for the last two days, is the, the man currently in the world who has the longest time and he's our past double gold uh, medal winner for our previous world championships in Turku in 2016 and also here in Belgrade in 2014. So he is the man to watch. He's not here with me today because he's preparing for his, comp for his uh, static breath hold today. So I'm missing him. I'm, uh, he'll be back tomorrow with me to comment on the dynamic performances um, for the finals. But we wish him well and we're excited to see him. But he, he will be starting at, uh, let me see what time his start time is. Um, later this morning. And uh, he, his time to go today is at 11, at uh, 12.20. So we'll be looking forward to see Alish's performance at 12.20. That's uh, time here in Serbia. And uh, wishing the best for him, of course. And there's Matt. Matt, congratulations. And uh, it looks like he's not wanting to speak right now. We'll let him digest that a little bit. Maybe he'll come speak with us later. Uh, we're getting ready for our next heat now. This is, uh, this is uh, heat number two. And in lane A, we have Sayayaka Oi of Japan. Personal best is 6 minutes and 15 seconds. In lane B, Takayuka Inui from Japan. Personal best, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. In lane C, Christian Makiusala from Finland. Uh, personal best is 6 minutes and 6 seconds. In lane D, Janita Kulkula of Finland. 4 minutes, 33 seconds. In lane E, Alice Hickson from Great Britain. Her best is 6 minutes and 58 seconds. And in lane F, Sven Abels from Germany, and his best is 5 minutes and 53 seconds. Uh, so our strongest performer in this heat is Alice Hickson uh, from Great Britain. Um, Alex has been kind of struggling this competition. I'm, I'm wondering maybe if she hasn't had been training uh, much or something. Her dynamics were not up to par for her and uh, other people would probably be happy with with what she what they did but that certainly was not within the range of what we would expect from Alice so maybe let's hope she has a good performance today and in, in static uh, maybe it's her day today and she's feeling better I hope so and we look forward to see what she can do you can see the coaches there with the athletes getting prepared trying to get them calmed down and, and ready for the start. This start will take place at 9.20. So we've got one minute. You can hear the announcer calling it out. And the athletes are doing their last minute preparations of breathing and getting their thoughts together, trying to clear their mind, relax them, lower their heart rate. You can actually feel your heart rate. This is, this is kind of a test of biofeedback if you know what that is, that's used uh, sometimes in medical practices where you're just trying to lower your blood pressure and your heart rate through mental uh, tricks actually, uh, thinking about good thoughts and pleasant experiences and happy things and it can, it can calm your mind and make you burn less oxygen and lower your heart rate. So our athletes will be using these practices. Any, any kind of trick they can do, uh, they will employ and hopefully be able to have a good performance here. And here they go. You see Fumi there coaching Sayoka. And there they go. You see them as soon as the, as soon as the mouth hits the water, they will start. The coach also has a stopwatch, as you can see. So they can keep track of the time as well, and they can give they give signals to the athlete to let them know what the time is. They can also verbally tell them the time. Uh, the judges will ask the the coaches to have the athlete signal if they believe that they're looking uh, as if they're not doing well and they will give a little signal with just a small signal with the with the finger the judge will say signal please the coach will tap the athlete on the shoulder 
and the athlete will just move this finger just a little bit to indicate that they're, they're still conscious and aware of what's going on. Um, there's also a rule that you have to ask for signals uh, after the uh, announced performance. If you don't have a coach, then the judge will ask the safety to ask for signals. And um, so with these performances at one second, if you don't have a coach, you will have a safety there tapping you on the shoulder constantly asking for signals. So it's a very good idea to have a coach. And as judges, we certainly prefer that. So we see on the list here that uh, Yanita Kukula of um, Finland decided not to try this morning. Unfortunately, we had a number of athletes who have uh, not been feeling too well. They've had the flu or um, colds, things like that. That happens at competitions, unfortunately, because of uh, stress and travel and um, time differences. All those things make one more vulnerable to illness. And uh, some of the athletes have been telling me they're just not feeling well. Here you can see Anna Louise 410, the judge from Canada. She's sitting next to Sasha Kukuk. He is from Serbia. He's the assistant on this particular uh, lane. And uh, the judges are assigned these positions in advance based on their nationality to make sure they don't have a conflict with the athlete who's scheduled to be doing the performance in that particular lane. We are not allowed to judge an athlete of our same nationality, so they make sure that uh, that you are not judging someone from your own country. There you can see the coach is putting some cold water on the back of the head uh, to try on the right on the neck to try to make this athlete more comfortable and. Um, you can see they're starting to move around a little bit. That's those contractions that I mentioned, uh, which are really annoying. Uh, I guess that's the best way I can put it. Um, I don't. If you've never felt that before, I don't even know how to describe it. It's sort of a. Uh, it's like a, a kind of a cramping sort of, uh, but it's it's really miserable, and. Um, it makes one really think to yourself while you're doing this is uh, I want to lift my head and breathe because once I do that I won't feel like this anymore. And it's really a mental battle to keep your head down and not lift your head up and just get this over with. But unfortunately once you do do that, you lift your head up and you stop, the performance ends and you tend to get angry with yourself for giving in to this weakness that we have for wanting to breathe. Of course the body is just that's what we do as humans we breathe oh I see we had another start Alice Hickson did not start as well so it must be that she's not feeling well it's unfortunate it's too bad that Alice has not had a good competition this time so now let's see how we're doing we're at four minutes we have four athletes still still going at four minutes and We'll see how much longer they can go. We're starting to see that they're getting quite uncomfortable, which is predictable. Um, when these contractions and this uncomfortable uh, feelings begin, varies with each person. It's, um, it's, it's a very individual thing. Uh, some people get contractions very soon in the performance. Some don't get them until much later. Of course, the longer you can delay the contractions, the more comfortable you can be. Uh, having those contractions uh, is quite, uh, quite difficult. It makes you feel like you're really suffering your way through this performance. There's the, there is uh, Fumi. She's uh, consoling her athlete. And, um, and actually, she should not have been touching him right there, but hi. So let's see what, uh, what happens here. That's... Um, uh, Inoue Takayaki, and, and there you can see uh, Sayaka Oi. She has come up as well. Let's see what the times are here. Tak Takayuki is 5.01, and Sayaka is 5.03, or no, Takayaki is, is, five, is 4.10, excuse me. I'm, I was looking at the points. Our other athletes are still going at 5.37, 5.30 now. 
Time is still clicking away for Christian Makayusula of Finland and Sven Abels from Germany. See what happens here with them as they are continuing. It looks like uh, Christian has come up and time is time is time has stopped there. It's going to be five minutes. We're waiting for the result there. 529 and 535 for them respectively. Christian and Sven. And we'll wait for the cards. Both of the Japanese competitors received white cards. And there's the points there. Sven has received a white card. 535. So that's a good performance for him. And Kristin Makayusula still waiting for the card at 529. From Finland in the center of the pool. And that's a white card as well. So that's very good news. Everyone so far has received a white card. And we're moving right along here. And here's our leaderboard, our current leaderboard for the men in first position, Matt Molina. 8 minutes 31 seconds. Second position, Sven Abels at 535. And tied with Robin Gunnarsson of Sweden at uh, 535. Robin came by this morning to speak to me and told me that he was going to just be conservative and he's saving his efforts for the finals for the, his other events. But uh, he had a, a good performance. So he'll be happy with that with a white card. For the women, in first place, Kyoko Oshiro at 5 minutes and 23 seconds. In second, Nasuko Ozeki at 5.05. And in third, Sayaka Oi at 5.03. At least the board coming in at 3 minutes. So the women, we haven't gotten to the uh, our women who are, are more um, uh, proficient apneanists in static. And they'll be coming up soon. But right now, the Japanese uh, women are leading. There you can see Olga Sidorova of Russia, assistant judge, Christian Hotner from uh, Austria. He's the ADA international judge responsible, meaning that he's in charge of all the judges for ADA and all judge things that happen. He works with me on the board. and So you can see some athletes here. We haven't started the next round. That will be starting at 9.35. So we're, they've got a few minutes here between. They have to allow quite a bit of time between the heats because you know, we don't know that uh, if somebody's gonna do 10 minutes or something. So there's a big block of time. And, but if the whole heat finishes sooner than that, then there's a gap. So that's where we are right now. We see one of the athletes here doing a preparation, that person with their head down, they're just doing a little warm up. Uh, Sometimes it helps when you do the warm-up to uh, get through the contractions uh, that it will delay the onset of them because your body has um, already been through the CO2 increase process. So um, athletes have different ways of trying to uh, make themselves feel more comfortable doing the static. I, I will say that I believe that static apnea is the most mentally challenging of all the disciplines because it's it's really a battle with mind over how your body is feeling. Yeah, great. I'm just waving this morning to to uh, Georgia Gorgios George Panagiotakis. He's going to be coming soon and and helping me here as my co-host today. Looking forward to hearing from George. He's he's uh, busy right now helping some of his um, his other athletes from Greece, fellow athletes. Uh, George is very good in static himself, but he's not going to be doing a static today. So I am enlisted him to uh, co-host with me, and I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing from George. He is the co uh, current co-holder of the world record in dynamic with Finn. So it's, um, he's a very accomplished freediver. He's also the current Greek record holder for constant weight with Finn in the ocean. He uh, is a deep diver. He's an instructor, 
Uh, he's just an all-around uh, incredible competitor and athlete. So you'll be hearing from George in just a few minutes. He'll be here joining me. And uh, we're looking forward to having him with us today. He can give you some inside information on static and what process he goes through in order to deal with these, these bodily re reactions that happen with the organs and all this pain and suffering. I think as you're watching this and they zoom in on the competitors, you can see that it's really uh, a struggle to get through these contractions and these feelings of uncomfortableness that uh, one has to go through in order to extend the breath hold. Uh, it, and also being still like this makes those contractions feel stronger. When you're moving, you can, you can somehow make them subside a little bit, uh, like in, in when you're doing a constant weight dive or a dynamic dive, um, the movement seems to uh, subside the, uh, the, the magnitude of the contractions. But when you're still like this, they are really strong for some people. Uh, and some, some people suffer them, as I said, from early on, and they can be very, very strong. Other people uh, don't have them quite as badly, and we don't really know why that is. Uh, we don't have any way to explain at this point why some people feel contractions stronger than others, but they do. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate for those that have these strong reactions, but it's just part of the game here in freediving. It's what we do on breath hold. So this next heat we have coming up now is heat three. And in lane A, we have Michal Murzowski of Poland, and his personal best is 648. In lane B, we have Ralph Stolzl from Austria. His personal breath is 6 minutes, 23 seconds. In lane C, Mariko Kaji of Japan. Her personal best is 5 minutes, 40 seconds. In D, Julia Kurzerska of Poland. Her personal best is 6 minutes and 4 seconds. In lane E, Ossi Petola. Of Finland, his best is seven minutes and three seconds. And in lane F, Sala Hakanpa'a of Finland, and her best is 538. So we will see here if um, we have some proficient uh, static apnea competitors. Obviously, you can tell by these numbers that they have already uh, done in the past in their history. And uh, wow. some Julia from Poland is is one of the Polish women who is part of that very strong core of competitors from Poland. Uh, they train together, they're uh, you know, quite uh, successful in the pool. So we'll be looking at her and watching to see what she does. Ossi from Finland has a good number at over seven minutes and he's right next to her. So we'll see how so he does as well. As I said though that sometimes the nerves can get to you and uh, you don't do your personal best. Some of these best numbers that, that we report here happen in smaller competitions where you know you're, it's not a world championships and you don't have so much attention and you can be more relaxed. Sometimes when you get competition at this level, it's, uh, it's just harder. You just feel a lot of pressure. You don't want to, but you do. It's like being in the Olympics, you know? It's like, it's, it's important. You've worked for this for months and you just cannot stay as relaxed as you'd like to. And relaxation is absolutely imperative in this particular um, discipline in free diving. You can see that we're having the countdown now. The athletes are getting ready. They're trying to relax. The coaches are there to assist them, count for them, help them. There's safety divers also in each lane. Safety is there in case there's some problem and someone starts to struggle. Safety. We always have safeties close by in case someone needs some sort of assistance. And there they go. You can see the athletes there were breathing up on their back because it's um, easier to do so and get a good breath. And then they just gently roll over. In this discipline, the athletes do not wear weight. There's no reason to because they're just floating on the surface. You may have noticed the last two days in the dynamic events, these athletes have this big weight around their neck uh, we call that a neck weight. Nothing unusual there. It's just called a neck weight. And that helps them stay under the water and, and keep them hydrodynamic and nice and level. 
So, and now that weighting is calculated with the type of suit one was wearing, how buoyant it is, and it's um, something one has to test in advance and get all worked out before you come to the competition. So here they go. You can see them now from this angle from our pool camera here provided by Divey. And the athlete here has her eyes closed, just trying to relax and get into that meditative state and get the heart rate down, stay as calm as possible. And right now, it, they don't feel bad. That's part of the thing at the beginning. You don't feel bad. It's, it's all just, uh, just very still and calm and trying to get relaxed. Uh, but soon, after a few minutes have passed, you'll start to see the athletes um, feeling some effects from holding the breath with the diaphragm and the reactions that we have with the contractions. So right now we're at 1 minute and 30 seconds. It looks like Asi Patola did not start. Uh, I'm not sure if um, he's a DNS that hasn't come up yet, but we've got a zero there, so it could be that he, didn't, he chose not to do a static today. Uh, sometimes mentally you just don't feel like it and uh, or you're not feeling well either way and um, we can see everybody else we're coming up on two minutes now everyone is still looking calm doesn't seem like anyone is struggling at this point or having issues with contractions uh, but uh, that probably will start happening before too long unfortunately for them it's also painful for the rest of us to watch because you know, for those of us who try to do this, we know how that feels and uh, you, you have an empathy for them feeling these, these contractions, this heaving that takes place in the chest that you cannot control and the only way to stop it is to lift your head and breathe and we're, our brain is telling us that it wants to breathe, our body is telling us it wants to breathe, but our emotions are saying, no, no, keep your head down, keep your head down, because I want to try to get a good score. So it's, a, it's just a constant mental battle in this. There you can see, just trying to relax. You don't want to contract any muscles at all. And you're trying not to clench your fists or your teeth or, or have any sort of tension anywhere. You, and one, one trick that many athletes will use is to start from the head and relax your head and your brain and your neck and your back and your shoulders and your fingers and, and work all the way down to the tips of the toes and the bottom of the feet and make sure that you don't have any tension anywhere. And you want to let all of the energy just flow out into the water and stay completely relaxed. Some people will use these sort of meditation techniques in order to get through this process of this uh, of relaxation. And uh, there's all different things that people do. Uh, and uh, those are all, all within the head and whatever the desirability is of the competitor, him or herself. So now we're coming up on four minutes here. It looks like everyone is, is, is hanging tight here and moving up. Uh, the clock is ticking along. Four minutes is a, is a time now sometimes where you'll start to see some reactions from the, you can see the water moving a little bit, that means somebody's having a little bit of a contraction, and a little bit of that diaphragm uh, heaving that takes place that I've mentioned. And this, this athlete from Japan, you can see she's got her hands up on the side, she's giving some signals there that she's okay. You saw the little finger, yep, there's a big contraction. You see that movement? There she's, she's struggling. She's trying to work through those contractions. As I said, these are, the, these are the moments where we're emphasizing, we know exactly how this feels. Yep, they're trying, they're, she's suffering right there, but she's trying to hang on and keep going, even though it's really difficult. It's a really good shot right here. She's just, she's just touched her coach asking her for the time. She wants to know it is. She's coming up on five minutes. I'm sure the coach just said, to hang on, hang on. You're at five minutes. A little bit more, a little bit more. I'm sure she's talked to her coach in advance and told her how long she wants to go. What time, what time? You can see she's saying that. Coach is saying, all right, keep that head down. Keep going, keep going. You're fine, you're fine. You give, you give positive reinforcement. Try to keep your athlete happy and, and going. Okay, there you can see that uh, Sala Hakampal from uh, Finland is up. She's done 505. 
So let's see, that is um, a little bit less than her personal best, but for a competition, that's very good. Uh, we've, we're now at, uh, let's see, who else do we have up? We have Mariko Kaiji, she came up at 5.39. That's very nice. And so that's right on her personal best. Her personal best was 5.40, so she should be happy with that. The talk clock is still ticking away for uh, Michal and for uh, Ralph and Yoya. And it looks like Sala did something wrong. It looks like that was a red card on that 505. I don't know what that was. We'll find out later. But some, some, some kind of problem is Yulia. Yulia, um, there she is. She's giving the okay sign to the time. She's looking very happy. Feels good about that. That's nice. So we'll see her, the clock didn't stop, but it should have. Because that was, we'll have to see what happened there. It looks like we missed that one. Sometimes we have a little bit of technical glitches here. We're still trying to work out this whole thing with Dive by in the pool. But I know you're all enjoying it. Uh, and we're certainly doing the best we can. I'm, I'm clear across the pool this morning on the opposite side of the pool. Because that, as you can see from the photos, it's very narrow on that side of the pool. So all of our cameras are on the opposite side of the pool. We're not close. So for me, it's t I can't see uh, what's going on there too well, and I I'm up on a platform, raised up to give me a view of it, but it's a little bit difficult for me to, to really have a dis discern everything that's happening at one time. Of course, when we zoom in, then we can see with the camera, and I have a screen in front of me that, that shows what's happening. Okay, so let's see where we are right now. It looks like the clock is still ticking for Ralph, Yulia didn't stop, but I, I, I know she did, so somehow that's not right. Um, and I'm not sure if Ralph is still going or that should have stopped. So, and it looks like now Aussie was there. It seems like we've had a little bit of mistakes here on this particular one. And it looks like Aussie got a white card at 6.37. Sala, unfortunately, was a red card at 5.05. We have a white card for Mariko at 5.39. We have a white card for uh, Michal at 6.39. And a white card for Yulia. Now we have it corrected. Yulia was 5.33. And Ralph was 6.34. So we have all white cards in this heat and one red. So, so far, everybody has a white card except for one. So that's good news for these athletes and I'm sure they'll be pleased that they got a white card. Here we can have the standings uh, after this last round. You can see Matt Molina is still first with Michal uh, Murzkowski from Poland in second place at 639. So the two Polish men are leading right now with Aussie coming in with a strong performance at 639 from Finland and Ralph from Austria at 634. Sven from Germany at 535. Robin Bernarsson of Sweden at 535, Christian Nakiusila at 532. So they're huddled up there at the top, fairly close to each other, and that will sort itself out as we continue. So for the ladies, we now have a new leader with uh, Mariko Kaiji at 539. Second place, Julia Kozerska from Poland. Third place, Kayuko. So, and fourth place, Yasuko. And fifth place, Sayaka. So the Japanese women are, are still standing strong, but we have many more competitors to go, and those rankings may change. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see what we think the um, cutoff's gonna be for the finals. We have six places for the, the first top six competitors who will be eligible for the medals. The second six competitors will be in the B final, and they are not eligible to get a medal, even if that performance in that B heat uh, would have qualified them for a medal, they don't get to get one. You have to make the A final in order to be eligible. It's the same thing that happens in the Olympics. They have the same thing in swimming, I know, for example, that they have an A and a B heat, and the B competitors aren't eligible to get medals, only the A competitors. So these competitors here, are trying to decide how much they have to do in order to make that A final because of course everyone wants to win a medal. 
that's the goal for competing is winning and uh, for most or at least uh, the people at this level here at the World Championships. Uh, but we do have many people who also are just here to, to test themselves and try to get a personal best. It always feels great to know that you've been successful in exceeding your expectations and doing better than you have in the past and that you've been training hard and, and uh, you're making progress. And you know, there's, there's yet even another group who come for the friendship and camaraderie, camaraderie and enjoy the company of their teammates and um, just enjoy the sport. We have, we're very proud of the fact that freediving is a very friendly uh, and family-like environment. Uh, the athletes all help each other and uh, try to make uh, everyone have an enjoyable time. It's not a, it's not a super strong, competitive, cutthroat environment at all. Uh, and uh, unlike other sports, it's uh, it's very open. I think part of it is it's still you know fairly small. But we have been around. Ada International has existed for 26 years now. We were founded in France by a group of freedivers. We are still run by freedivers, uh, managed by freedivers. I'm the president, current president of Ada International. Uh, we don't get paid. We're com or we are a volunteer organization, and everyone who works in Ada International as a volunteer is a freediver, and we all understand what's going on because of that. We don't get any government support or money from outside sources. All of our income is earned through our education program and some small donations that we receive. And we are a uh, nonprofit. And we just uh, do the best we can with the best intentions, which are to try to grow the sport, promote freediving throughout the world, and support our athletes in the best way that we can. We have a very strong record in safety and uh, that is our primary concern at all times, is that the sport is safe. We are also concerned with, with educating people in freediving about safety, uh, because there's a huge popularity increase in the world of freediving around the world. And a number of young people in particular want to get into freediving and learn about it, and they need to learn how to be safe, because if one dives alone, the sport can be quite dangerous, and uh, but if you do it in a proper way and you've been educated by an instructor, a certified instructor, uh, you're much less likely to have a problem. Uh, Spearfishing in particular can be quite uh, risky, so we do have education programs for recreational divers, spear fishermen, photographers. Not everybody wants to be a competitor. Actually, most people don't want to be competitors. Uh, many people want to just go out and enjoy the water and it kind of extend from the level to snorkeler to freediver. And if you're interested in taking courses, please look on our website, adainternational.org. That's adainternational.org. And you can find an instructor there, and we'd be happy to help you find someone in your area. We have instructors all over the world, just practically everywhere and we'd be happy to help you find someone to help you learn how to free dive. And we would love for you to join us in this amazing sport. And um, you can just do pool if you choose to, like these athletes, and, but many of them do depth as well. Or you can be a depth diver, or you can be a photographer. There's all kinds of things one can do to enjoy free diving. So here we are, we're getting ready for the next heat. In lane A, we have Carol Karsh from Poland. His personal best is 7.08. Lane B, Jeppe Lokenwitz Patterson from Denmark, his personal best is 536. Lane C, Justina Nowak Berenstein from Poland, her personal best is 521. And Lane D, Dimitris Antonio from Cyprus, his personal best is 4 minutes. And Lane E, Wojciechslav Kolkat from Serbia, personal best is 349. And in Lane F, Dave Smith from Great Britain, his personal best is 4 minutes and 20 seconds. There you go, you can see the bridge, and there they go, they're off. So you're allowed to use a float, that's a noodle, a regular pool noodle, like children play with in the pool. You're allowed to use that if you want. Uh, there's no rule about that for um, free diving, and static, static apnea. Uh, one would not want to use that for the other disciplines because it would create drag, and uh, you don't want to drag anything with you that you don't need. 
You want to be as hydrodynamic as possible in the dynamic events or in the constant weight events. Um, in free diving, we have a we have a total of um, three pool events here. Uh, the two dynamics, dynamic with fin, dynamic no fins, and static apnea. In the ocean, we have four events uh, which are recognized for records, which are constant weight with fin, constant weight no fins, free immersion, and we have one, one discipline called variable weight, which is not a competition event, but is for records only. So um, the ocean ones, free immersion, is you actually use the rope to pull yourself down to the bottom and then come back up. And the others, it's with the fin or with no fins. You're not allowed to use the rope. You can only touch it once at the bottom to turn. And in variable weight, you use a sled, which is weighted, to go down to the bottom. And then you have to come back to the surface on your own power using the rope or without. And those are our events that we have. We're currently recognized by Ada International for Records. So here we go. We've got, we're coming up on two minutes. You can see the athletes here trying to, there's, there's Alice, she's helping. There's George. George is going to be joining us in a few minutes. He's coaching, he's coaching his uh, friend from Cyprus right now, Demetrius. Uh, George is actually Greek, but he lives in Cyprus. So I'm sure this, this may be one of his students. We'll ask him when he comes over later. And um, he's coaching from the side of the pool. That's legal as well. You're allowed to do that. You don't have to get in the water if you don't want to. Uh, the water is a little bit chilly at 24, so a coach would need to wear a wetsuit. Maybe George didn't want to do that today, so he's on the side of the pool. And that's perfectly fine if you prefer to do that. Coming up here at the 2.30 mark, everyone is still feeling comfortable and fine. Not, not to the point yet where they're struggling. Judge is there attentively watching. There's Grant Graves, who is the head of the jury for this competition. He's one of our most experienced judges in the world. He's from Malibu, California. He lives close to me. There's Christian Fodner, he's from Austria. Olga sitting next to him from Russia. The jury is selected by the assembly. It's both, they're voted and selected. They apply, uh, the, the judges will apply in advance and then it's a voting process. Select, and the judges are selected through that process. There's George trying to help his, his teammate, Demetrius, struggle through this. You, you can see there that um, that is Yepa. He has come up quite soon, 308. I don't think he's gonna be too happy about that. He's being uh, coached by Annette. There's Annette, she's speaking with him. I don't think he's gonna be too thrilled with three minutes, but uh, we can find out later, All right? So we still have Carol Karsh of Poland, still going. Yepa has stopped at 309 with a white card. Justina of Poland is still, is still going. Uh, Boyislav Kukot of Serbia has cop stopped at 346. But we still have other competitors still going. The clock is still ticking for them, over three, four minutes now. Let's see how they do. And we'll wait for the car for Boyislav. Um, the clock didn't, didn't start for Demetrius, but uh, must, there's some kind of a glitch there, but he was going. So we'll see how that worked out for him. Our other competitors are still, are still trying to hang on here and get a few more seconds. Every second counts, and you get points for each second that you achieve on this. This is our only discipline that we have where time matters. There's Dave Smith from Great Britain. None of the, he's given us the smile. He's happy he's done, I believe. That's a white card, very nice. So, uh, there is this, so as I started to say, this is our only discipline, only one at all, where time counts. None of the others in the ocean or the pool make any difference how fast or slow you are. That's all personal preference and style. 
This one though, every second counts and this is based solely on time. You don't get style points. You don't get, you don't, you don't get rewarded for anything other than for how long you hold your breath. That's the only thing that counts in this particular discipline. So you can see we're still going here. Yepa, as I said, 309 with a white card. Demetrius did 335 with a white card. Boyoslav, 346 with a white card. Dave Smith, 435 with a white card. Clock still ticking for Carl Karsh. He has a personal best, which is beyond this, so he's still going. It looks like Justina has stopped at 501 and waiting for the card on that one. And Carol still going. As I said, his personal best is 708, so he hasn't gotten there yet. We're at 615 right now. You can see he's starting to struggle, though. This is starting to get difficult. He's, uh, he's having some contractions. You can see some movement there in his throat. He's giving a signal, though. He's still feeling good. You can see right there he signaled very clearly that his mo he's mentally still clear, which is important. Once, once you become confused, it's time to stop. So, but right now he's still very clear. He's at 6.42. Probably has a plan to try to get close to seven minutes, which he's working on right now. He's, sometimes when you move, move over towards the wall and hang on, it can help those contractions a little bit. Um, you can drop your feet down and stand on the block too. That can sometimes help. Carol's passing seven minutes now. It's a good performance for him. His personal best is 7.08. So let's see how he does. Um, seven, he's just passed his personal best. He's at 7.13, 14, and he's struggling. Got to make sure he doesn't take it too far. He's got to be able to be clear to make that protocol. Still signaling, there he is. He's still mentally clear, but he's struggling here. He's feeling up, up signaling again. The judge is asking, there he is, he's up. Now he's breathing, giving the okay sign, saying, I'm okay. Looks like he's going to make it. He's, he, you can see, though, it's it's not easy. He's trying to get himself back together again, get some oxygen up to his brain. His coach has a smile on his face. He's very pleased. I believe this is a personal best from him. For what I have on my records, it is. So let's hope at 729 it would be great for him to have achieved a personal best today. And uh, we're waiting for the judge's decision. They will hold him for 30 seconds to make sure he's OK. And yeah, that's a white card from from Judge Anna Louise. And look, he's very happy. His coach is very happy. So that's excellent. Excellent performance from Carol Karsh of, of Poland. Yepa came in at 309 with a white card. Justina, 502 with a white card. Demetrius, 335 with a white card. Boys left good coat, uh, 346. And Dave Smith, 435 white card. All white cards in this heat. Congratulations to all. Those are great performances. I'm sure they'll be very happy. And there's Carol there. We'll see if we can get him to come over and say a couple of words to us. I haven't been able to grab anybody yet. George is going to come speak with us, but he had to coach his friend. So, And there's Matt Molina. He's, he's uh, complimenting Carol. He's one of his teammates. Okay. Most of them train together, I believe. So here's our new, our new leaderboard. We'll be adjusting this now with our, our recent additions that we have. Matt Molina is still in first place with 8 minutes and 31 seconds. Carol now at 7.29. Um, Michal Morozowski, Morozowski, excuse me, 6.39, Ossie Patola at 6.37, and Ralph at 6.34, and Sven at 6. So that's our top six right now, but I believe that will change as we continue on. So that's our top six right now, but I believe that will change as we continue on. Here's the women in first place. We still have Mariko at 5.39, second place Yulia, and third place Kyoko, Yasuka in fourth. Sayaka at 5th, and Justina now at Bernstein at 6th. We have more men competing overall in these world championships. Uh, that's, usual, that's common. We still have more men in this sport than women, but we are getting more women all the time. It's a great sport for women. I encourage you all to take some courses from Ada International and, part, and learn how to freedive. It's a great experience. Uh, it's a uh, Men and women compete and train together. There's, uh, it's great friendships can be established, and uh, you'll find support and coaching and training partners. And uh, it's 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 a great way to reach out and find some 
some new friends with a common interest. People that are interested in being uh, healthy and in being in good shape. Um, many of our ocean competitors are involved in environmental efforts on saving, saving and cleaning up the oceans or working with endangered species. And uh, you can meet like-minded people at, and join our Facebook group also. That we, on Facebook we have a very large Facebook group, Ada International. It's a public group. And we would be very happy if you would uh, send in a, you just want to join our group. It's an open group, but you do have to go through the process of joining just to keep out the spammers, of course. So uh, I post on there quite frequently. And uh, you can ask questions uh, about freediving and find friends. And we would love to have you join us on our Facebook page. We also have a Twitter, Ada International Twitter. We have Instagram. Uh, we are all over social media, so look us up, Ada International. So here we go. We're going to have our next heat, which is heat number four today, uh, five today, excuse me. In lane A, we have Asua Shifley. Uh, her first name is really Sia Fi Datul, and I know I'm not saying that correctly. She told, always tells me just to call her Asua, and she's from Malaysia. Yeah, George is joining us. So great, great to see you, George. Thank you so much. I need help. I've been talking away here by myself, and I'm sure people I'm are getting. I'm in your services. Thank you very much. Great. Right. Here he is. Here's George. Hi. Say hi. So hi to everybody, George. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So we're. I am just really pleased to have George here with us today because he is one of our huge stars in freediving and has been since I first met him in 2011 in Kalamata yeah, when I was I guess, competing. Yeah, 2011. Yeah. It was yeah. my third uh, international competition for depth uh, disciplines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you that's nice. when you broke the 100 meters yeah yeah the first quick man in the 101 meters yeah and i remember because i was there competing i was doing no fins at the time that was the only thing i did then and uh, and i met you then and that's when you broke the 100 meters and it was really exciting i was doing media for ada then and um and trying to compete which didn't work out very well for me but uh, that's another story but we're really glad to have you here and you. Uh, I'm glad you can spend some time with us and give us some insight into the athletes and training and all of these things the secrets that you might want to tell us or about your about your instruction that you do in your business and all of those things and it's just great to have you here thanks so much thank you thank you very much so how do you feel about the static today so far um the static uh, discipline it's um, quite interesting discipline for me for myself mm -hmm. just because from my experience it's uh, uh, a little different training, you need a different training approach wow. in order to combine uh, dynamic and uh, static. So if you decide to compete in uh, all disciplines, it's very, it's very difficult uh, just because you need to, to train in different ways. And of course you need to adapt your nutrition and uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. you know, so. we've seen the, the last few years, you know, I had Alish uh, co-hosting with me, and we've seen the last few years in static that uh, some of the people who are really good in static are very thin and I know that they have really changed wow. their diets in order to become more successful in static yeah. so um, it's kind of part of some of the research and different things that have been going on to see what makes one successful in that and it's interesting uh, I, d I noticed last time here that a couple of the girls told me they had been fasting and doing different things like that which you know I, I wonder about it a little bit medically yeah. But um, there have been some things that people will try to see if they can improve their breath hold. And I'm not sure it works, though, for dynamic and other events where you need a lot of energy. You know? Exactly. Exactly. This is the problem with, uh, with, a, with a static discipline. You need to adapt your nutrition, you need to adapt your calorie restriction, you need mm -hmm. to do fasting in order to lose a significant amount of uh, weight in order to, uh, yeah. to reduce your um, basic metabolic rates. Yeah. And it's save oxygen. Uh, but in dynamic, you need uh, to have a, a stable, <laughs> stable weight, body weight, yeah. and you need a lot of calories from a carbohydrates due to the anaerobic metabolism. Yeah. So it's kind of a conflict. It's like you have to decide. I noticed like today you're not doing a static, although you're very good at it. But you made a decision to focus on dynamic and not try to do the static. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, George is the co-world record holder at 300 meters in dynamic apnea. And I got to tell you, he is one of our most exciting competitors for me to watch anyway. He uh, goes fast. He uh, has a beautiful technique. 
and uh, it's going to be very, he had a, a great swim yesterday uh, and qualified at the top of the list and so uh, it's, it, it's going to be a great competition but he's also really, really good in this static. So our competitors are down now, and let me let me complete the list. I started to say we have mm -hmm. Asua in lane A, and she's from Malaysia. She does 520 as her personal best. In lane B, we have Mika Mes Meskinen from Finland. His personal best is 5 minutes and 26 seconds. And in C, we have Ruslan Bogan of the Ukraine, and personal best of 530. D is Ikaro Devalle from Brazil, personal best is 620. In lane E, Florian Grauer from Germany, personal best 6.45. And F is Sylvain Desaunier of Canada with 6 minutes and 53 seconds. So these, this particular group, personal mm -hmm. best, is they're all fairly close to each other. We don't Very have close. anybody, you know, in our, I was explaining to our audience, in the first group we had Matt Molina, mm -hmm. who only announced one second. Yeah. Of course he did not intend to only hold his breath for one second, but yeah, he is a competitor that wanted to go first. Yeah, it's, so a, it's like a strategy. If you want to compete in uh, all disciplines, you need to take a series into account your uh, your recovery. Yes. So if you if you compete early in the morning, you have a lot of time to recover uh, in, the, in the rest of the day and uh, to be prepared for the next uh, for the next day. And uh, of course, if you have a target, the objective is uh, really clear for you, and uh, it's really, it's uh, it's enough for you to, to pass in the finals. So yeah, it's a good strategy to to compete early in the morning. Yes, and for Matt, in his case, he will be competing tomorrow in the dynamic no fins, and he is the current world record holder, and he is seated first. So. I'm sure for him, he's feeling like he wanted to do this static and try to rest the rest of the day yeah. in order to prepare for tomorrow because he's got a big swim to do tomorrow. And I, I personally, and Alish and I had been talking about it, I don't believe that he or anyone else will be trying for a world record tomorrow in no fins because they're doing it long course. Yeah. And it's harder in long course. When Matt achieved his world record as well as Magdalena, who holds the women's record, it was in a short course pool. And that is it, that is an advantage in no fence to have those turns because you get a big push off the wall. Exactly. So uh, we'll see. I mean, some they could surprise us and they could put in a big performance, but I I wouldn't be surprised if, if they're below world record tomorrow. But we'll see what happens. You know, you never know what might happen. You never know. Yes. Yeah. So here we are. We're at we're at two minutes and well, no, we're coming up on well. It looks like the Malaysian yeah. athlete uh, Asu has been sick. She told me. I asked her. She's been sick. This is well below her best. Mm. She's laughing. She's she got a white card. Yeah, she's kind of yeah. making fun of herself. Two minutes. I'm sure she she just said, oh well. This, unfortunately, I got sick. She had to travel all the way from Malaysia. Amazing and trip, yeah. you know you tend to get sick on the plane from mm. being exposed to germs and all of that but she's a she's a great athlete she's a great competitor and she just gave it a go but she's not feeling well so yes. she came up really early but here we have we passed three minutes we're at 345 everyone else is still trying to continue I think we may have a glitch there with Ikaro, or no he didn't go it looks like Ikaro from Brazil was on is, is not there so he didn't start today we are uh, almost close to personal best. Yeah, for moment. some of these, yes, yes. Yeah. So I noticed that in the previous heat that Carol Karsh, he did, uh, I think, almost uh, 7.30, which uh, was a, a very good for him. His personal best was 7.08, and I think he did almost 7.30. Oh. So that was a really good uh, performance for him. So here we can see our athletes who are still, looks like Ruslan Bogan from Ukraine has come up at 3.08 with a white card. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now at 4.30 for everyone else and they're still going. At this point, George, what are you thinking when you get to that four minute mark and it's starting to feel a little bit, what, what, what do you tell yourself in your head? <laughs> The most difficult thing is uh, in the static applet discipline, uh, the first part of your static, the first part of your dive, it's the most difficult part because you have a lot of strong contractions <laughs> due to the diving reflex activation and uh, you need to relax and you need to uh, push your mind to relax due to this phase. So if you pass through this, uh, this struggle phase, uh, later on it's uh, more easy to relax. 
I noticed for myself, and I think for most people, when you first start, your heart is just going, and you can, mm. and you have to really struggle to try to get it to slow down. It's that first effort that, and you're telling yourself, relax, relax, relax. Yes. And the, fr the first second is uh, really, really difficult due to the packing also, because some of the athletes. Uh, perform a packing technique packing. and uh, you feel your heartbeats for the first minute. <laughs> really, yes, really hard. Yeah, you're really hard. It feels like yes. it's just pounding in your chest. Looks like Mika from Finland has come up at 5.32. Yes, and uh, uh, Florian and Sylvain are still going. And uh, as we said, Ikro looks like he didn't start today. I know him, he's really more of a depth diver, but he did travel here from Brazil, which is nice to see him. Uh, George just mentioned packing, and packing, would you like to explain what that is and uh, why why athletes do that, competitors? Um, the competitors, especially the top athletes, uh, try to, to do a packing technique. Packing is try to uh, inhale in the shallow air into your lungs, and specifically into your lungs, in order to increase your lung capacity. and. Um, Really, top athletes can increase uh, more than uh, two and a half liters, or maybe four, maybe three, and especially four liters. Some uh, two two athletes in the world, uh, so you can increase signi uh, in significant amount of time your your static breath work. But it is something that we don't advise beginners to do. Is that yeah, correct? Would you agree with that? Yeah, of course. We have uh, several athletes here who can um, do amazing amazing performances with, without packing. So for the first uh, years of your career, you don't need to do a packing technique and uh, you can do, of course, uh, amazing things. And it's something what one needs to learn from an instructor how to do it properly because you can get injured doing it. Uh, you can actually have problems with your lungs if you do it incorrectly. So you do need to work with someone and, and somebody like George, who's an instructor, can help you with that when you get to that level in competition. Florian Grauer has come up at 641. That's, a nice, that's, nice, that's a nice dive for him. Looks like there's Sylvain from uh, oh, oh, keep that head up. Oh, you don't you don't want to do silly things like drop your head I mean, down. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So Sylvain from Canada. Looks like that was 735, which is really nice. 738. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe he's no, maybe that's incorrect. I, I believe that might be incorrect. What we'll I've see. realized for most of the people here is the technique on the surface protocol. You need to squeeze as much as you can on the surface protocol in order to avoid uh, low blood pressure. Uh, Blackout. Uh huh. Uh huh. You have two two kind of uh, blackouts, I guess. Uh, the first is from hypoxic symptoms, and the other thing is from uh, uh, low blood pressure. You can uh, you can do a blackout due to the low blood pressure, and uh, in order to avoid uh, this situation, is to squeeze as much as you can the whole all whole your body to to increase your blood pressure, and uh, in order to feel um, much much more oxygen into your into your muscles and your bloodstream. Well, that, that is a really great tip for those of you who are competing and want to get to the level and try to be like George, try to be a world record holder. Uh, that is a great tip that he just told you. Make note of that, that he's telling you what you can do to avoid having these problems with blackouts. Uh, the blackout can come not so much from the fact that you need to breathe. It's because your body's been compromised. Yeah. And you've got to get it back on track quickly. And... Um, so George just told you there what you need to do for that. The first movements from uh, low oxygen situations, it comes from uh, four seconds uh, until um, uh, eight to ten seconds. So the critical zone from, in the surface protocol is from uh, five to ten seconds. So you need to squeeze as much as you can, and uh, the last five seconds you need to uh, you need to take seriously into account the time <laughs> and uh, to to remove your facial equipment and to finish the protocol. But you have a lot of time, 15 seconds uh, surface protocol, it's enough. It's enough for everybody. Yeah, you know, we've talked about extending that. Uh, there's been different, you know, rules, uh, updates and changes over the years, and especially since the performances have gotten increased so much as to whether we should change that. But uh, there's also other things to consider is if you, if you make it too long, uh, people may push themselves too far, uh, and especially in depth. Uh, yeah. So we don't want people to, we want, we want to keep the sport safe and have people still be a little bit more conservative. If they think they don't have to do a protocol in a short amount of time, they may make bigger announcements and get into more trouble. So that's one of the considerations that we have. 
for this. Yeah, so, two sides of coins. Yes, in, absolutely. In yes, exactly. Absolutely. So so far here in this in this heat, we have Asua who did a two thirty two white the card. F, a ten uh, twenty. <laughs> well, that one's not working for some no, reason, yes, and that has reason. happened. Mika five thirty two, Ruslan three o eight, Ikro was a do not start, Florian six forty one. And we don't know yet what the what, what <laughs> happened in that end lane, but we know that isn't right. So yeah. uh, the only person we currently have at this at this competition who has done over 10 minutes is Alish, Alish. and we'll see how what he decides he's going to do today. But um, he does he does already have on the books over 10 minutes. Yeah. So and we we've, we've personally seen him do it. So we know that he can. We will see him in the last uh, series. Yeah, he's coming up. He's his his dive is here at uh, twelve twenty. He will be in the heat with uh, Volodymyr, uh, Alex, uh, Laurent de Bocarin, Buda, and um, Willie Hoffman. So yeah. and um, Chris Marshall. So we're having the announcement there. There's uh, Alexander Sasha Bubenchikov who is also, screen. like you, has decided not to do a stag today, but yeah. is also very good in it, just like you are. Yeah. Uh, but he's focusing as well on the dynamic events, so he's not going to do this. I think um, maybe for sometimes it's a relief not to have to do a static. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's really good to have a rest <laughs> yeah. after a long uh, dynamic performance. Yeah, I mean, George good, had a good cover, yeah. very good performance yesterday. Uh, do you want to talk a little about your dynamic? How did you feel yesterday? Um, uh, I felt uh, really good, in, uh, especially in qualification hits. That's because my training approach is uh, to, prepare, to prepare my body and myself in the last day, yeah. not in the qualification hits. So if I if I compare my results from the previous years, yes, uh, uh, the yesterday performance was really You're exactly really good. where that's really where you want to be right yes, now. Yes, yes, and uh, my decision it was to push a little bit more because uh, the A finalist it was the mm -hmm. sixth place. So, yeah, the yes, everybody decided to push uh, at uh, the wall of 250 meters and uh, to turn and uh, to come up. So if I touch like when I when I touch the wall, I guess I decided to push a little bit more, and it was uh, 268 meters. Yes, that that is an outstanding. When you, this is just qualifying for all of our viewers. He did 268 meters as a qualifier, and but as he said, there was a risk unless you did a big performance of not making the A final. I mean, it, there it was. Uh, it was already very competitive, and when we saw people making that turn at 250. Like uh, you know that that meant that the numbers was going to be really really strong in order to make that A final. Yes, this competition this year is extremely high mm -hmm. in, uh, in a competition, and you need to push a lot uh, in order to qualify yourself yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the finals. Yeah, and it's always sort of a, a uh, you know a balance. You're trying to decide like how much do I need to do in order to make it safely, but then again, I don't want to push too much and risk have, getting a red card. Because you know, if you if you get yourself too far on the edge, you could get zero points and not even make it at all. So it's really hard. I, I can imagine trying to decide where where to stop. Now, when you're in the pool on a dynamic, do you know exactly where you are just about all the time? Yeah, I try to visualize uh, my kick strokes, and uh, I can swim with uh, wow. my my eyes closed, uh, and I and I count my kick strokes, and uh, and I know. Exactly where I am, not 100%, but 99%. I know where exactly I am in the, in the race. And you don't wear any goggles? Uh, this year I changed yeah. uh, and I wear goggles because I feel more relax uh, relaxation oh, uh -huh. during my performance and I, and, uh, I don't execute so much uh, uh, intense kick strokes for the first meters. So I feel more comfortable with the goggles and uh, I choose to compete with goggles this year. Well, that's very interesting. You know, that's one of those things that the uh, training process and finding out what works uh, keeps evolving. You know, you may try one thing and then decide to try something else. Obviously, exactly. you've done that. Exactly. You need to change your equipment. You need to test a lot of things. Uh, your, uh, your equipment, your style, your swimming style. Everything is... Uh, you need to take seriously into account all these, all these things in order to improve your... In, in special in dynamic. So our next heat is getting ready. You can see that athlete there packing. Let me read off the names here. In lane A, we have Solveig Mathiasen of Denmark, 
She's had a very good competition. She achieved a personal best uh, and a Danish record in the mm. uh, dynamic no fence on oh. our first day. And with an outstanding performance, she's currently second behind Magdalena. She did 161 meters in no fence. Mm. So she's obviously um, doing well in this competition. Okay. Her, her personal best is six minutes and five seconds. In lane B, we have Vladimir Ilic of Serbia. His personal best is 502. In C, we have Brefni Boltz from uh, Ireland at 5.35. In lane D, we have Sylvie Gilson from France at 6.30. And in lane E, Marta Kolasinka from Poland, and personal best is 4.56. And in, in F, Alexander Baikov from Russia at 7.45. So we have, we have some um, strong, strong possibilities here. Stroke runs enough with that. Yeah, so mm. we'll see how We'll see how they look today. Um, as I said, Solveig's had a very good. Uh, I I didn't realize that she had was so talented in no fence. That is really a, a great performance at 161. Okay. Very few women in the world are um, at that level because it's uh, it's slow, it's long, and it's very hard to do. So it's um, one of those things. But the current world record is held by Magdalena. You will see. Mm -hmm. These women perform tomorrow along with the men. Magdalena is the world record holder at, I believe it's 194 meters, but she recently did 200. 100 but, in a short pool. Yes, and in a short <coughs> pool, yes. And But it did not count as a world record because she did it in Poland with Polish judges, and you have to have a judge from another nationality yeah. in order for it to be a world record. Sometimes if you don't have the age as in order to yeah. confirm your your performance, you don't feel so much expectation from yourself and uh, finally you push uh, in the point that you never imagined before. So, <laughs> Yeah, she did that 200 and you know, and, and so it's, it's just one of those things. You know, we try to, we try to make it uh, not intimidating when you're at a competition for the judges try to be friendly and, uh, but it's still, no matter what, it still is. There's still all those nerves. It just happens. There's no way. And you put, as George said, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You know, sometimes everybody has an expectation from uh, from themselves, and uh, you feel anxiety. The anxiety comes from uh, from the top athletes. Okay, if you are a top in a, in a high level, you have the expectation to reach your maximum potential. And in the low, moderate athletes uh, have the expectations to hit the top level athletes. So everybody has uh, have uh, anxiety in the competition. If you feel comfortable enough with the competition environment and uh, to feel uh, relaxation and you have empty empty mind, uh, you will perform the best. Absolutely, that's what we strive for, but it's so difficult. So easier said than done, isn't it? It's like what we what we say to ourselves is nerves don't help in this sport at all. I think in other sports, in racing, it does help. But, you know, like swimming or track, you know, you, you want to kind of get that adrenaline going. Yeah. And in our, our sport, you don't want that. And it's extremely, you know, difficult to... Um, just try to stay relaxed and keep calm and not put pressure on yourself. But you know, this is the sweetest part yeah. in our sport. If you if you feel uncomfortable and you reach your maximum potential, is the sweetest thing. You know, it's a really really uh, good thing for your motivation and uh, yes, the greatest right. matter. Looks like we have our first athlete here who has completed. I believe that yeah, is. Uh, some depression from yeah, I, I from let's her. see. Yeah, that does, she doesn't look too happy mm. about that. Um, that is Solve uh, from Denmark, and she looks disappointed in herself mm. at 325. I can see why. That is way, oh, yeah. that's sad. She's really disappointed. I don't know what happened there. She's had a great competition, but this is not what she was expecting. And as George Very was emotional. saying. Very emotional thing. Yeah. As George was saying, he, you know, it's you put all these expectations on yourself, and she probably was hoping to make the final, and that 324 mm. will definitely not make the final. So the rest of our athletes, Vladimir and Brefni and Sylvie and Marta and Alexander, are still going at 4:30. Um, I'm not sure what there the time just caught up. Yeah, sometimes our clocks get a little off here, so. Now they're getting to the point you can see, you can see here the struggles with the contractions and trying to fight through that. Yeah. 
and uh, it can. I was telling our viewers before you joined us, George, that it's really uncomfortable. The feelings of that diaphragm and um, yeah, uncomfortable situation. There, sure. he's he's come up. All right. That's good. Oh, very good. 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 Very nice protocol there. You can see him remove his goggles yes. and all his facial equipment. Give the OK sign. Right here, this must be. Um, the Polish athlete. Polish athlete. Yes, Marta. She's done 511. Oh, there's some shaking, trying to get some air in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Finally, okay. Yeah. So Marta did 511, and it's like Sylvie and Alexander and Brefni are still continuing. Look, uh, Brefni's come up 525. That's Brefni there, our Irish athlete, our only competitor from Ireland. It's his first competition. I'm glad to have him here. Okay. Vladimir at 505. It's like that was a white card. There's a protocol there. I believe that's uh, yes, that's the French. That's the that's, uh, Sylvie because I can see Laurent is coaching him. So it's hard to tell. I was telling our viewers we're clear across from the pool, and we have to look at the screen. And right now it's all pixely, yeah. so we're having trouble. <laughs> um, so. Let's see here as we go. Because white card, yes. Yes, yep. So, so March is the white card at 511. Vladimir's a white card at 505. You need white cards no matter what. Yes, yes. No matter even if it's not your best, it's nice exactly. to get a white card. Absolutely. Red card is never fun. No. Russian 646. Uh, yes, yeah, still going. Yeah. Looks Come like on. somebody's oh, pushing oh, oh, oh. him. Oh. No. Okay, there he is. But okay. Oh, okay. He started to do his protocol before he removed his nose clip. You have to do the protocol after you remove your He's nose clip. He's lucky enough because uh, they didn't wear uh, goggles. goggles. Yeah, because I, yeah. So he was at 646. It's like we're still waiting for the card on um, Brefni and Sylvie. Gabby Contreras, the judge here with Alexander. And uh, conferring with the assistant, see that everything is all right on that. And they're discussing. Uh, the athlete, if they don't agree with what the judge has decided and they get a yellow or a red card, they have the right to protest. And um, this process takes place in the afternoon, actually at 4 o'clock. And if you don't agree, and we also have a thing in our sport, which is unusual, mm. is that you can protest someone else's card as well. Yeah. So if you're watching and you see something and you think that that decision wasn't right, you can protest it on, on one of your competitors. It's not so fair from the from gun point of view, but um, yes, it's a part of the game. For our, for our sport mm -hmm. and I believe that uh, yes we need to change this and yeah. you need to take uh, the decision in the um, in the first three minutes like a CMA competition change the situation and it's more clear for everybody to, to take uh, final decisions it seems like the uh, the process of protesting another athlete is is bad sportsmanship I think in some ways um, it happens and um, you know, I, I don't know if it, but I think it breeds kind of a bad attitude amongst the athletes. I'm not sure yeah. that, I, I don't, I, I'm not. To be not honest, I did this in the past and uh, I don't feel <laughs> good with this. Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I believe that, yes, we need to change this. Well, that is something that we can do because we can, we totally control the sport. All of us are athletes here or have been in the past and we have the right to initiate a change and we vote on it and make decisions based on that. We're not controlled by any outside organization. So it looks like Alexander has been given a red card. And finally it's a red card, right? Yes, so that was a red card at 645. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Sylvie Gasson, that, that one hasn't come up yet. Um, I don't know, Brefni was 525 with a white card. We're gonna see uh, the adjusted standings here now, coming up. Mm -hmm. We still have Matt Molina in first place. We know that much at 8.31, oh. Carol at 7.29, Sylvain de saint at 7.02, Florian at, at 6.41, and Mi Mihal um, Murzkowski at 6.39, and Alsi Patoli at 6.37. So those are our top six right now. Um, 
I think that'll change. Yes, um, I believe the same. We'll have to see what happens. Matt did a strong 831, but uh, we do have other people coming up that have done that much or more. And um, we can see how, how that works out. Um, so in our next heat, we have, we've just finished heat number six. Our next one, we have um, Marina Romanova in lane A from Russia. Her personal best is six minutes and 19 seconds. In lane B, Olga Markina of Russia at 541. Katerina Sadurska from Ukraine at 613. Katerina is, is having a good comp competition. She's a former swimmer and has just kind of started recently, but she's doing well. Philip Fennell from Great Britain at 6.08. Paul Sutton from Great Britain, and his best is five minutes. And Stefan Anjus from Serbia at 7.07. .07. And Stefan has made two new Serbian records, both in no fins and dynamic. And dynamic. So, yeah, so he's doing well. So we'll see if that's going to help uh, move on over into this discipline as well for him. It seems like sometimes when you're on a roll, you just um, things are going well. You continue to do well, so we'll see how it goes for him. Yeah, it's the very important to, to start the competition with a, uh, with a strong performance and clear performance in order to take the motivation to push yourself uh, in, in the next uh, performances. Yeah, it's hard, I think, to recover sometimes if you start off with a red card and you're disappointed in yourself, and uh, you have to try to turn that around and, and yes, get your mental the point of view. Is Really, really difficult. Yeah, have to try to change your company, attitude yeah. and turn it around. We see Goran Cholak walking in front of us here, mm -hmm. who yeah. is uh, very strong in static apnea. Mm -hmm. uh, he competes in the uh, shake, shake. I always forget the name of it. The competition that takes place in the UAE, where we, we win a Range Rover, and he has won that competition in static. And it's a difficult one. Uh, you're not allowed to wear any facial equipment. You're not allowed to wear a wetsuit, and you have to hold on to a rope. Uh, it's like one and a half one meters. And two meters. Two meters deep. underwater. Underwater, yes. Yeah. So, it's. Um, it's a quite strange uh, yeah. competition, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it is for the athletes do it because they win a big prize. So, uh, but. Uh, they don't have a separate men and women's division, so women don't have much of a chance. Um, it's we in our sport. Uh, we still have a uh, separation in levels of achievement between men and women. It's just a matter of physiology. Women have more blood. They're just we just we don't have as big lungs. You know, different. We're just yeah. Yeah. There's still so we have separate divisions for that reason. Yeah, so exactly. That, yeah. We don't. We we train together. We compete together. But when it comes to the competition itself, we have separate divisions so that the women can win on their own with competing against other women. So here you see the women standing right now. And first now we have uh, Sylvie Gilson with 6.03 with a white card. We didn't get to, we didn't see her final one because there was something wrong with the clock. So now we know that she got a white card, which is great for her. Followed by Mariko Kaiji of Japan at 5.39. Yulia Kozurska from Poland, 5.33. Kyoko Oshiro, 5.23. Marta Koloshenka, 5.11 and Yasuka Useki from Japan. So I was explaining earlier that um, the reason we have this, this big gap in between the starts and static is because some of the performances can be very long. Very long, yeah, especially almost 90 minutes sometimes. Yes, so we need to allow enough time uh, for those that may go that long. So we don't want to have it be that, that we're ready to start the next one and we still have somebody Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Under the water, so that's why this this the way it's uh, timed on these starts allows to make sure there's enough time for everyone to complete their static and they can clear the lane out and get ready for the next group and that the next competitor has plenty of time to, to relax. relax. And we don't want in this sport it's very important that nothing is hurried, that everyone has uh, you know a time and that things are quiet and you can gather your thoughts. George was mentioning to me yesterday that he was enjoying this competition because it has been very relaxed and I think it's been very well organized. Um, everything is happening in good time and there's not, you know, it, it's stressful, especially you put on yourself, 
but it's not stressful due to extenuating cir circumstances. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. If I compare the competition in 2013 in this country, in the mm -hmm. same pool, amazing changes. Amazing changes and it's uh, very friendly for the audience uh, uh, all in all around the world. And uh, yes, it's very enjoyable to, to see the competition on your screen. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for us with this new technology that we have, being able to broadcast this to everyone to tell them about our sport. And we're very pleased to do that. Uh, George was saying about the, the previous competition we had here uh, was outdoors. We had very bad weather. We're, we're having rain today, so I'm very glad yeah. that we've made the decision to be on the indoor pool instead. Uh, when you're outside, you just can't control it. You just don't know what's going to happen. And George won the dynamic competition in terrible weather the day that he got his gold medal. Uh, it was really cold. Many athletes did not do well because they couldn't adjust to the cold. George wore only little jammers and pulled off this great, great swim. And I was very impressed myself and uh, got his gold medal. So it was great. But it was not easy. I'm impressed for myself too. <laughs> <laughs> it was after, after the race, uh, someone told me that uh, the temperature of the water it was 21 degrees. Yes, 21 is very Amazing. cold. And he was not wearing a wetsuit because he doesn't compete in a wetsuit. That's, he doesn't he does what works for him and he had to he had to get through that and mentally be very very strong to deal with that so it's um, and that's what makes a champion and that's why he is the champion yes yeah, no matter what the situation you need to push yourself 100 yep. percent and in the ocean it, it's even more challenging because you can't control what goes on in the ocean at all there's current there's all kinds of things that happen waves exactly. bad weather it can just be really, really challenging, and uh, you just never know. And it's long. But if it gets too bad in the ocean, we will stop the competition. But uh, that's that doesn't happen that often. Most of the time, we, we just have yeah, to deal with it. Yeah, safety first. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So here we are. We're looking at two minutes now with our athletes okay. coming up, and everyone's just uh, getting into their relaxed state. Starting to. There's um, Katerina. Romanova, she is mm -hmm. the captain of the Russian team, and she is coaching her athlete, Mar Marina, who happens to have the same last name, but they're not related. And um, Katja is watching to make sure everything's all right. She's signaling, positioning her athlete, talking to her, letting her know where she is so she can feel relaxed. Some people doing static don't want to be talked to at all. Yeah. And how do you, how, how do you approach that? Um, uh, personally, I don't feel uh, uncomfortable to touch me and, uh, on the surface mm -hmm. when, uh, uh, when you're performing your, your static breath holds, but sometimes, yes, you need to... Uh, other people have uh, uh, the feeling to, to hear the voice from the, sa from the safety and uh, to, to, to know the time and uh, everything like that. Um, it, it depends. It really depends. There's Philip Fennell. He has come up quite early at 2.45. Mm. He obviously is not pleased with that. Yesterday he had a strong samba and a dip on his dynamic performance and was red carded. And today, I don't know, mentally just wasn't into it, I guess, mm. and stopped early. That is not, he's not happy with that. He's getting a yellow card. The reason for that is because he's under his announced performance. So that is a penalty. That will be, yeah, he'll get penalty points because he had announced uh, four minutes. So uh, they'll subtract all those seconds from his points. So actually, he would almost be, he'd be in the negative, but we don't give negative points. So he'll end up with a zero probably. If you feel uncomfortable and you are far away from your objective, it's um, really not uh, necessary to push yourself in. Yeah. Oh, you can see no. there it's 18 points. No, yeah. that's certainly not going to get him anywhere. The others are still going on four minutes now. Um, coming up and uh, but Phil I don't know what happened to Phil uh, I don't know sometimes if you don't feel well you just stop and he was he's not happy but here's Katja she's trying to help Marina get through this she's looking at the time she's telling Marina where she is Marina's personal she's best is 619 so she's 19. strong yeah so this she's she's got a ways to go Two here minutes yeah and she's been having some serious contractions oh, there yeah. As you can see, so this is going to be a good sign. no. This is going to be a struggle. She's now she's already oh. trying to put her hands on the wall. Mm. She may nerves may have overcome her here, and she's she's going to have to fight for this. 
I just try Sometimes if you, if you stretch your body, if you stretch your arms, you feel relief from contractions, contractions. and you feel comfortable. Or putting it's your feet unusual, down can help yeah. too, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just have to move, you know, being still is just too painful. It's like a safety feeling yeah. sometimes. Well, we're getting some disruption here, so we can't really see here. Let's see. We're, oh, okay. So, Katarina, uh, let's see. Marina's still going, I believe, although we're, we're seeing the block up there, so maybe not. Uh, Paul Sutton, Stefan uh, Andrews from Serbia is still going. Uh, uh, Katarina Sojerska is still going from Ukraine. It looks like Marina has stopped at 4.47. She won't be very happy with that. Olga Martina has stopped at 5.11. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. Marina there. That is well be below her personal best. Yeah. Um, yeah, Katja, the coach, is, is looking disappointed as well, hoping her, her Russian uh, competitor would do better than that. Uh, but she's going to... Yeah, she's disappointed. Okay. She's disappointed. That is not what she was hoping for. Uh, Olga Martina is a white card at 5.11. And Paul Sutton is a white card at 4.56. Philip Finnell, as we said, yellow card at 2.46 because he was under his announced performance. Um, we still have... Uh -oh. oh, there's a struggle there. But okay. Oh, oh, okay. You can see the fight. Yeah. That's, that's the fight to get through it. That is Katarina Sudurska being coached by Alexander Gubentikov. Good coaching from Alexander. Good Alexa. coaching from Alexander. Got her through it. He's, he's looking very relaxed and she, yeah. she's looking happy. She, she figures she made it. <laughs> it looks like she did 608. She had to struggle, but he coached her through it. That's the importance of a coach, giving yeah. you those cues when you need them. He's got a smile on his face. You need to give the right instructions at the right time. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, waiting, they're t waiting for the time, but she's fine. She's up strong. Yeah, got through it through those goggles off of her head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Alexander isn't doing his uh, static today, so he's helping his teammate, which is great. And George was coaching earlier. I pointed out to our viewers, you were co you. You were keeping yourself warm and not getting into that cold pool without a wetsuit. There's Alexander's very happy. She's very happy as well. That was a good performance for her. Uh, That's a white card. White card. Stefan Anjus is a uh, 608, unless that time is wrong. But Katarina, yeah. 608. Yeah. That was Katarina right there, so that's uh, great. 609, perfect. Yeah, white 609, card. white card. So great. And 608, Stefan Yeah, so we only had one yellow card in that, and that was Phil Finnell, and I don't know what happened to Phil, but... Um, that was well beneath what he was expecting himself to do. He wasn't happy. Uh, we have, um, we're going to be get coming up on heat eight right now. Um, Maybe we'll have a break now? Yeah, we have a break right now. And we will, we will leave you for the break and we'll be back in about 25 okay. minutes. And we'll be looking at our next group, which will be some big performances coming up. So please join us back in about 25 minutes. Okay, we'll see perfect. you then. Thanks See so much. You. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah, we're on break now, so we'll come back. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, after we do the break.
go. Hi, welcome back to the static apnea part of our competition, and this is the qualifying rounds. Uh, getting ready for our first uh, medals heat, which will be tomorrow in dynamic no fins. Right now, I have a Canadian athlete joining us who's the record holder uh, in a couple of events currently, a national record holder in Canada. Yes. And he's had a great competition. Would you properly say your name so that I don't just botch the French horribly for us? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Sylvain Desaunier. See, see what I mean? You can see it sounds much more elegant when he says that when I try to say Sylvain Desaunier. So, oh, that's anyway, great. Great. <laughs> not too bad. Yes, well, I did take yeah. French in school, but that's been a long time. Okay. So, you've had a really great competition. I heard you had some problems, though, getting to this point. Yes, yes, it was um, had some some issues. Uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, problems with the with plane the coming here, and then the 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 last or uh, luggage. And from from now, not, I still don't have my monofin, so I had to find some some other fins to for the, the dynamic. And uh, fortunately, my uh, my sponsor Ama uh, from Freedive, Freedive Gears. He found some contacts with uh, the French team and some uh, Martin Tanson from, from the team from France. Uh, he, he gave me his, uh, his monofin for the dynamic, and uh, so I uh, I could be able to uh, to do, do it. To do uh, it, yes. yes. Well, let me let me just take a quick moment here to announce who we have competing because we have started here in heat number eight of uh, the static apnea competition. In lane A, we have Mikkel Brandt from Denmark. His personal best is five minutes and 31 seconds. In lane B, we have Fumi Sonazaki from Japan. Her personal best is five minutes and 13 seconds. C, Kristina Asieva from Russia at five minutes and 47 seconds. In D, Miladin Jovanovic from Serbia. His personal best is unknown to me right now. Uh, Linda Stenman from Sweden in the next lane, E. I also don't have her best down. She didn't write it down for us. In F, it's Heike Schwarzner from Germany, and her best is 638. So we've got uh, everybody kind of close here in this one. They've all announced a performance of four minutes, but that doesn't mean anything. But they need to do a minimum of four minutes in order to receive a white card. If they go under four minutes, they will get a yellow card and a penalty for not doing what they've announced. So, uh, Sylvain, let's continue with, uh, let's, let's talk about your performance today, which you yes. already had. How did that go for you? Oh, it was, it was really well. It was really good. Uh, I did good preparation. Uh, minding was good. The physics was good also. Uh, I recover a lot completely from yesterday uh, sometimes you when you do static you don't you have some sen bad sensations uh, and today was great from the beginning was all good so uh, I made it to what far than what I thought I could today uh, and I, I beat my personal best of, uh, by nine seconds, uh, my PB was uh, six uh, forty-three. So uh, and I made uh, seven uh, seven o two. That's so, excellent! Uh, Congratulations! Yes, yes, yes. Very difficult to do it at a world championship too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just yeah. harder than being at home, isn't it? Yes, there's a lot of stress, of preparation, of things that you don't know. It's, it's my first uh, world mm -hmm. championship, so there was a lot of things that I don't. I didn't know how does it work and what the, what the options. Uh, but made it. Uh, I'm pretty really proud of it. That's great. And yesterday you had a good performance in dynamic, and I heard you broke the record, long-standing record, by William Rimram, who's one of our most famous athletes from Canada. He's a very good depth diver, yeah. excellent in no fins, uh, and I've known him for, for since I first began. Uh, He's a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a very famous person in Canada in well, Fremont. Fremont. Kind of legend. Yes, kind of he legend. is a legend, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and he's now he's big into con shark conservation and been doing a lot of work for the environment, which you know we're very proud of him in a lot of ways. So that was mm. a big accomplishment yesterday to get your name on the books in Canada as well. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, but so, uh, as I, I broke the, the national record, it was. Uh, some, 
around two months ago. Uh, it was a uh, dynamic. It was uh, a long uh, record from ten years ago, maybe. Around. No. And but yesterday I made it safe. And it's safe just to be sure I have a white car. And instead of my my PB of uh, 206, uh, I stop at 150 just to be sure to make it easy and great for us. That's great. Well, we have our first athlete who has surfaced now. It's Mikkel Branth of Denmark at 337. I'm sure he is not happy with that. Uh, That's well beneath what I'm sure he anticipated he was going to do. But uh, he's done, and that's it for him for now. And we'll see how everybody else is doing. Uh, our clock uh, is still ticking, and it's not quite accurate because Christina Asieva uh, is not at 6.09. Our clock is running right now, just coming up on 4.30. Uh, so we'll see how everyone else does. Um, Nicole, I'm sure he's going to be a yellow card because he's under his announced performance, so there's no way he can get a white card. Uh, but for whatever reason, he just didn't, uh, didn't have it today. Don't know why, but um, it's the way it goes sometimes. And uh, our other athletes are still are still going. And at this point, it looks like Linda Stenman has come up from Sweden. She was at 4:38, it looks like, and uh, waiting for the card from her. And um, there she is. She doesn't look terribly happy. You can see that look on her face, like, well, I don't know. I should have done better. Yeah, just not happy, but, uh, you know, sometimes you, you disappoint yourself and there's nothing you can do. Once that head comes up, it's over. Mm. <laughs> That's the end uh, of it. So, but it's still a white card. A white card's good. And here we see that is Miladin Jovanovic, and he is struggling to stay up and uh, he's not breathing, which is the problem. You need to force yourself to breathe. Uh, he did give his protocol. We'll have to see what the judges say about that on the time. You're only allowed 15 seconds in order to completely complete the mm -hmm. protocol, meaning you have to say, I am okay, and then the watch clicks on the 15 seconds. So we'll see how that went. He was having trouble. He uh, was hypoxic. It's the term we use for that, meaning he his oxygen mm -hmm. supply was so low that he wasn't quite mentally clear. And I and think he swipe his, uh, his face two times, which yeah, is... Yeah, uh, it, it maybe we'll see what, what Christian Judge decides on that one. Uh, yeah, see, that's what he's saying, too much. And that's a sign of confusion, and uh, that means he just wasn't clear enough. If you wipe your face just once, just because you've got water in your eyes or your nose is running, that's acceptable, but mo multiple wipes like that means that you kind of weren't with it. So I believe that will be a red card for Mladen, unfortunately for him today. Looks like that was, uh, I don't know, that time's not right on there. And right now it looks like all of our athletes are done, but we don't have the results yet. But I'll give you those in just a second. Well, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations. And, thank you. and really glad to have you here and representing Canada. As And it's fabulous. And I hope to see you again soon competing back in the water again. Oh, yes, I'm for sure. I'm not the next opportunity. Good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hi. All right. Let me let me read off what we've got here so far that I know of. Linda Stenman, white card, 439. Nicole Branth was 336 yellow. There's you can see him there. He's just kind of oh well, it wasn't his day. Uh, the others, I'm not really sure what's happening. Mladen, yes, did get a red card, and that was for that multiple facial wipe and not being clear. And he may have been overtime as well. I don't know. Uh, and the other two, I'm not sure if they didn't go or if we just don't have the result, but I'll let you know as soon as I can. Uh, looks like Linda and, <laughs> and Nickel are having fun over there talking, being silly. Yeah, they're friends, that's great. Teammates, up. Ah, there's Sofia Tapani from Sweden, and um, that is Nicole Ensbo, who both were multiple record holders. Um, yesterday, broke broke the record in dynamic, and Nicole wanted me to send out a message to her, her husband, Michael Ensbo, her childhood friends, Anna and Pernilla. She says she's thankful that they accept the fact that I spend more time in the pool than I do with my family. But she had a great swim yesterday. She made that turn at uh, 200 and increased the record 
uh, to uh, 206 in the dynamic. So right now we have joining us a new star from the Ukraine, Kacha, and uh, she had a great performance just now in Static. And what was your final time? It was 6.08. 608. She was coached by Sasha Alexander Bubentikov, and he did an excellent job coaching her. We saw her just throw those goggles off with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, I'll say, and uh, that was a great performance. How did it feel today? Uh, I feel good, but uh, it's so cold water oh. for me. Uh, some guys said uh, that it's okay, but uh, I used to uh, warm up and perform in warmer. Water. <laughs> yeah, what kind of, how thick of a suit are you wearing today? Uh, it's five, uh, five millimeters. It's a five, so it's, yeah, if you're wearing a warm suit, you're still getting cold. Yeah. I'm always getting cold. So. <laughs> but you're from the Ukraine. You should be used to some cold weather, but. But not water. Not water. Are you enjoying the competition? Uh, yes, I really like um, for me, it's first competition uh, uh, world championship in free diving. I used to take part in uh, world championships uh, in uh, synchronized swimming, but uh, it's really a good experience. So quiet, uh, mm -hmm. uh, even you cannot um, always express your emotions mm -hmm. when you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but I like it. You know, the judges were commenting that they're enjoying judging you because as a synchronized swimmer, you are trained that when you lift your head up, you're smiling and looking and looking towards the judges. And you do that after years of training automatically as a synchro athlete. Yes, and, um, and no. I, it's an uh, expression of my feeling. Yes, I'm happy that I'm done. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, good or bad results, but uh, I'm trying to stay positive. Always. That's great. Well, uh, we've enjoyed watching you perform and you've had a great competition and um, there she's, we're being photographed now by her, her teammate from the Ukraine, Denis Ryloff, who works for us in the media department as well and Ada International. And uh, we're, having, we're having great fun here at this competition. We're very pleased uh, Ada Serbia has done an excellent job organizing it and everything's going very smoothly. We're, happy that we are indoors rather than outdoors because our weather is it's chilly outside and rainy so we would be even you'd be less comfortable yes. having to deal with that and the water that's colder than what you prefer so, so the, the air is uh, warm and it's, it's yeah. good yeah so it's nice and warm in here and we don't have any any bad rain or anything we have to deal with so anyway we're getting ready for our next heat now so coming up in this one in lane a we have Pascal Reboul from France. His personal best is 8 minutes and 6 seconds. In lane B, it's Dimitri Mazepin from Russia at 7 minutes and 54. Lane C, we have Emily Vernier from France, 6 minutes and 2 seconds. Lane D, Mikhail Bochenek, excuse me, from Poland, 7 minutes and 1 second. E is Tiano Nikolic, and uh, her personal best is it's close to 6 minutes, I believe. She didn't write it down, but I believe it is. And in lane F, F, it's Ryosuke Suzuki of Japan, and his best is 601. So uh, we will be um, taking special attention to Dimitri from Russia, as he's the one who has the uh, highest PB of this particular group here. And uh, but the announcements are all in the 4:30 to 4:59 range in this group. But um, as we've said before, it doesn't really matter what you announce, that just puts you in the order, but you don't have to do that just that, that time. You can do whatever you end up doing. Um, now in depth, we have a different situation. In depth, you have to announce exactly what you're going to do. You can't do more than that. You can do less, you can tune, turn early and do less, but you cannot go any deeper than what you've announced. So there's, because of the safety factor, uh, we have to have a we have to have a finite number on how deep. Now, do you do any depth diving? Uh, yes, I began to learn it, <laughs> and uh, my personal best is uh, 41 in constant weight. Excellent. It's good, but it's really different work. If, it is. Uh, in the pool, uh, I feel like at home. Yes. Yes. I just have to learn some technique and. Um, uh, mindset, yeah, uh, but in depth it's really, really different. Yes, well, I know that there's high hopes amongst your teammates in the Ukraine 
because uh, we'd like to have uh, enough to make a team for the team team competition that we have. So uh, Natasha needs some other people to compete with her. She's she's very good and. Uh, we would like to have more people uh, so that we can have a women's team. It would be fabulous, but I've got to get you moving up there and in depth. Yeah, working on it. <laughs> yeah, in depth, we, in the team competition, which we'll be having in the fall, it's two pool events. It's the static apnea, which you are seeing today, along with dynamic, which you saw yesterday, and one depth event with this constant weight with thin. So the athletes have to be able to do all three of those, and it's a combination of points and the, th the team that has the three best scores is the one that wins. So you have to do a little bit of each thing in order to win. And you have to be a little bit more conservative because to try to get points because you need this that block of points. We yes, see, not to risk too much. Yeah, we see uh, now walking by are uh, Sophia and Nicole, the two. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you. And so now we're going to be starting this next heat. And I am going to be uh, having uh, George come back here for a minute. And I also had asked uh, Alexander Bubantikov to join us, but he may have gotten uh, sidetracked somewhere. But I'll, I'll grab him. And, uh, but in the meantime, we'll continue with what we have right now. And um, this next team, which is uh, heat number nine. We have one, two, five more heats after this one, and uh, the numbers will be increasing as we go along. And we'll see how we stand after that. And um, it's going to be um, at the very end, I know I was just talking to Valdemar Carlson, and he's in the last group, which is only two people, and he said, for me, he says, tell me how much I have to do in order to qualify. So I said, I'll try to get a message over there on the side so he knows what the standings are. He, uh, he helps us on the ranking, and uh, he's an IT guy, and uh, his efforts are much appreciated. i got George coming back here to help me, so um, to make our conversation much more interesting. There's, uh, there's our, our doctor here, is Dasha. So, oh, she's looking for something. So, George. Hi. Here we go. Here's our next group. And we are almost in the end. We are getting there. We got five more after this. We're starting to get into the bigger numbers oh. on PB. So, we have in the lane A here, we have Oscar Pascal Rabul. Mabul. Yeah, and he's at an over eight Specialist minutes. Specialist in static, I guess. Yeah, we have some people uh, that only do static. Um, not as many this time as we've had in the past. I noticed that there are some others that. Uh, 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 Beatrice uh, Negro from France isn't here this time, and she's a static specialist as well as Gabka uh, Greslova from Czech Republic. She only does static, but they yeah. they didn't they aren't competing for whatever reason. Um, so, um, but I think Pascal is, like you said, a static specialist. So, all all his uh, hopes hinge on this one performance here to see if he can get into the finals. So we'll see how that goes. We also have um, Dimitri. From Russia, he's at seven. His best is 7:54. So, mm. there, there you can see Pascal. He's being coached by uh, Pierre Crevelet from France, one of his teammates. Uh, Pierre's had a, a good, good competition so far. He's done some good, good dynamics. Uh, I guess I don't think he's doing a static today, so he's available to coach. Yeah. And. Uh, but we've had a lot of white cards, which is great. We haven't. We just we had a red card in the last one. Uh, a person that was just a little too shaky and uh, couldn't quite get themselves back together again. But uh, I, so I think no blackouts this, uh, in no, this competition. No, no, and uh, but things may change when we get into the finals. People are more conservative trying to get into the finals than when it comes to the final and it's on the line. And now, when you're competing yourself in dynamic. Do you keep an eye on the other people in the other lanes, or are you just doing your own thing? No, no, no. The, 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 the purpose is to do your thing. Okay. Don't try to look at the other athletes because uh, um, all people try to follow uh, their own paces, their own speed. Uh, everybody has different speed paces, and I'm a, I'm a fast uh, swimmer. Mm -hmm under the water and it's not a good idea to, to look <laughs> behind me <laughs> so yeah I try to follow my own so do you just uh, look straight face. down at the bottom is that yes. what you usually do I close yeah, my eyes okay. I count on my kick strokes and try to visualize 
There's Tiana Nikolic from uh, Serbia. She has come up. I don't think she's going to be too happy with that performance. That is uh, she's freezing. Yeah, she looks like she's too cold. Yeah, and that is 314. That is well below what mm. she can do. I know she does, you know, well over five minutes. And she looks, yeah, she's very cold. Uh, maybe that's why we had a couple of other people that haven't done well either. Uh, Kratja said she did well, but the cold was bothering her. So some people can't seem to adjust to the cooler water temperature. So I'm sure Tiana's disappointed with that today. That's unfortunate. You need to for find her. the right setup uh, in order to compete uh, in a hard conditions with a w cold water to high to have the right wetsuit, a uh, thick wetsuit. Thick wetsuit. Yes, thick yeah. and very elastic wetsuit. Yeah, you don't want to have a wetsuit that's constricting in any way because you'll just be c uncomfortable the whole time. Yeah. So, and this, this athlete here has chosen to just wear a cap. Caps don't keep you as warm as a hood does. Hoods exactly. Are, but you can't hear very well with the hood. And uh, sometimes the hood can feel uncomfortable. I personally don't like hoods very well, but if I'm really cold, you have to use one. It's just the way it goes. So let's see, we've got Tiana with a yellow card, and that's because she came up too soon uh, because she had announced over four minutes mm. and she only did 313. So she gets only a total of 19 points. Yeah. Uh, the, the penalty points. So there are other people are all going. I can't see in lane C if uh, I think maybe the clock isn't working because uh, Emily um, Bernier, that clock isn't going either that or she's not here. And I can't, can you, can you tell from here if that lane is empty? I can't tell. Um. You see? No. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like, but anyway, we'll find out what's going on there. That may just be the clock's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is um, Ry Ryosuke Suzuki from Suzuki. Japan. Up and okay. Okay. Yeah, he seems like he's he's okay with that. So. Yeah, the team from Japan is really uh, it's really amazing. Yeah, the big and support they, and the big smiles. They are, and you know they're all except for one diver. The rest of them are all new, so and they come all that. Oh, look at ah, he's look. he's really <laughs> happy. So that must be that Team spirit. He, very nice. That's that's great, and uh, he, so he's happy with that performance. That's super. That's great. Yeah, they're very supportive of each other. The thing too is that uh, Fumi has been translating for them. They, they most of them don't speak much English. So we have to kind of use a translator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they travel all this way. Uh, the sport is very big in Japan, and they are very enthusiastic. Look at that. They're just so happy. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. Uh, that's fun to see that. So let's see I how... I the very first diver from Japan, it was uh, Ruzo Sinomida. Ruzo, yes. Yes. Amazing, amazing man. Very good depth diver. Yes. He has retired since. I wish he would come back because they have not had a man in Japan that has taken over uh, at the same level that uh, Ruzo uh, had achieved. He's got all the national records for Japan in depth. And, uh, depth and static, I guess. Yeah, he's very, but uh, we haven't had a, we haven't had anybody that's that's moved okay. up into that yet. So we're almost at seven minutes right now. Yes, yeah, seven minutes, and uh, and we still have. See, we've got, we can see some contractions happening there. Yeah. And um, struggles, but this is a long. We're in the long phase here in that this seven is the minutes. Part. It is. Okay. Okay. So seven Pascal minutes. has come up. Rebu. He's giving the protocol, up, oh, struggling, having some shakes, shaking, shaking, shaking. The coach is not allowed to hold them up or help them. They can talk to them, but they can't hold them up. Dimitri Mazepan has come up at 7.14. That good, looks like they struggled through that one. And the Polish guy, for seven, uh, no. Something wrong with the yeah, time. Yeah, I think there's some, maybe something wrong with the time there. Yeah, so that was good. It looks like people were happy though. There's some clapping going on over there. And a very nice battle for uh, Rebu. And, uh, yeah, and very Sipping. nice. 715, 715. Those are very respectable results. And um, let's see, he's got the full hood. I think that's, uh, you know, oh, this F, this, he's very happy. That's great. Good to see. Smiles from yeah, everybody. Yeah, that's great. 
Oh, yep. Kisses and hugs, too. That's good. So it looks like, and now the clock's just a little off here because uh, now we, we have the strong, uh, the strong series, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll Cholak. Yeah, we'll have we'll have uh, in lane A in our next group here. Mr. Dabrowski. Yeah, we've got Poland. yeah we've got some very strong competitors uh, coming up here um, with uh, Krzysztof. As George says, Dabrowski of Poland, his personal best is eight minutes. Uh, Graciela Rivaux um, from France, 6.02 for the girls. Kayosuke Abe of Japan, 6.16. Uh, Yuriko Ichihara from Japan, 6.38. Goran Cholak, his best, they didn't write it down here, but something. it's nine, <laughs> nine to nine something. Nine to 11. Maybe. Yeah, nine something. Uh, and Peter Durdik from uh, Slovakia, 8.33. So, um, We'll have, we'll see here what Goran does. Um, and I believe uh, Goran Cholang and Mateusz Malena fighting for the price of uh, uh, the Natalia Monchanova, the overall price. Yes, yes, the all overall price. They're the two top athletes who are doing all three disciplines. Uh, the others have chosen to focus on one or not do the static or something like that. And uh, they want to get the overall award. So. Um, and this year, for the first time, Ada International is, is giving cash prizes. So there actually is some cash involved. So uh, we are happy to say that yes. uh, people will get some money if they win. <laughs> so, uh, so we can see our current standings here. It's still Matt Molina at 831, Carol Karsh at 729, Pascal Revul now at 716, Dimitri Mazepan at 714, uh, Mihail Botenik at 7.08, and in six, Sylvain de Saulnier, who we just spoke to at 7.02. That was a personal best for uh, Sylvain, who's very, very happy with that. Okay. And he's been kind of struggling. They lost his luggage, so he's got no monofin. He had to borrow one yesterday. And you know, that can be really stressful. This when, is the competition, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. And, <coughs> excuse me, losing your luggage is never fun. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, but he's very happy. He's having a great time, and he did a good performance. Excuse me, I got kind of a frog in my throat here. So in our, um, let's see if they're going to put up the, the women. Uh, we haven't seen them yet, but I'm sure they'll put that up for us, and we can see. Um, we're getting down here to the wire where things are, are going to be deciding, that top six and then the next six. So in first place for the ladies, we have Heike Schwerzner from... Germany at 631, Katerina Sudersku, who we just spoke to from the Ukraine at 609, Sylvie Gilson from France at 603, Emily Vernier, oh, she was in that last heat, the one that we told you that didn't seem to be working, 551, Mariko Kaji at 539, and Yulia Kozerska from Poland at 533. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is, they're kind of bunched up there in uh, six minutes. I believe that we have some people coming up. Yes, yeah, not so high performances uh, until now. No, no. And we do have Veronica Ditkus here, and uh, she is a static specialist from Austria. And uh, she will be coming on later. And let me see, her personal best is over eight minutes. So I, it's almost nine. Yeah, she's coming up. She's coming up in the heat after this one, and her personal best is 8.53. So we'll, we'll see how she does. She's been waiting for this one event, as you said, a specialist. So, specialist in static yes, apnea. Yes, specialist in static apnea. Yeah. And um, I, we have uh, two remaining records still held by. Natalia Maltanova, it's the static apnea for ladies, and the uh, dynamic with Finn. She still holds those. I think that the dynamic with Finn uh, may be broken in this competition. We'll see. Uh, Magdalena had come fairly close to yeah. it in Finland. Uh, we also have other, other women now who are in contention. Uh, that one may go, and we'll see. But the static is, is over nine minutes, and... Um, that, that nobody's gotten quite close to that yet for the women, so um, we'll see. But um, you need to have the commitment and uh, the focus to, f to follow a, a specific tra training approach for static apnea in order to hit uh, to reach uh, nine minutes. Yeah, amazing. It is. It is something that uh, I mean, unless you actually try doing it yourself, it's 
it's kind of hard to understand the process for that. It's a, it's a, it's just a, a different thing really than the rest of our events. It really is. It's uh, it's part of what we have to do. You have to learn how to hold your breath and control and all those things. But the fact that you don't move, um, and it, it's such a long breath yeah. hold, is something. So we got a little shot there, Krzysztof Dabrowski from Poland. Um, he's part of that very strong Polish team. And so George, you know, speaking of that, what do you think it is with the Greeks and the Poles in particular, where you have such a strong, strong commitment to the sport, and such strong athletes? You have a history of that. Yeah. Uh, in the, from the 2013 until now, we try to, to improve the dynamic disciplines and uh, we're not so strong in static, I guess, but uh, yes, in dynamics uh, we have uh, Yanis, uh, Aris, mm -hmm. Chris Papadopoulos, and uh, some female uh, athletes mm -hmm. who try to, who try to improve the, the performances and the, try to improve the level in a, in a Greek. And Polish, uh, Polish divers are really, really strong in uh, all disciplines. It's really, really amazing, and uh, yes, if you have the, the team spirit, and uh, some good knowledge behind you to, to try to and to do some experiments uh, with your training and with your nutrition and everything like that. Uh, you are in a very good position to to do your best and to, to reach your fullest potential in the future. One thing that is really great about Greece too and uh, Ada Greece is you have a lot of big cool competitions, very strong competitions. So it gives a chance for newer athletes to, to try and learn because they can go and they can watch you or or Giannis or Eris and Eris has been a great mentor to a lot of the younger yes. younger divers and because uh, he's been doing it for some time and he's just such a he's really passionate he's passionate about the sport passionate and the sport, he's, yes. he's 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 kind of he's very very good in the no fins and uh, he's a good swimmer he's a depth diver as well and he's he's done a lot but they have great competitions there and they also have depth competitions and where you live in Cyprus as well they have depth competitions and um, you know, if you're interested, you know, please contact Ada Greece or George directly. He's on Facebook. I know that. And yeah. uh, George offers courses. He can he can help you to achieve your goals. And uh, this is something that we we love to do in our sport. And it's how many of us make our living is by instructing others. And uh, we'd be glad to help you if you want to know. Just just let us, you know, contact us, and we will be there. There's Tiana. She's just not happy. I think she was just cold. Next to her is coaching is Katja. She's coaching a, the, one of the Russian athletes. She's here as the um, uh, coach of the Russian team. So right now we are looking. There's the Japanese athlete. Um, and as George said, the Japanese have a very close-knit team, a very strong team. And they have a lot of passion about the sport as well. And it seems to be really big in their country, and they get—they seem to get a lot of sponsorship, which is really nice. So yeah. uh, I know, like uh, the girls who are very, uh, world record, we have world record holder Sayori Kanashita, who is the record holder in uh, constant weight, no fins, in depth, uh, and Hanako Harose and Tomoka Fukuda. They all have very uh, good support from uh, sponsorship which allows them to travel and pay for things. Maybe from the government also. Yeah, they get some money from the government as well, from what I understand. Yeah. So, that's great. So here we go, we're at two minutes. This is really just the beginning. And right now we, you know, can't... Very can't interesting position from uh, the police uh, guy from yeah, uh, Dabrowski. Yeah, that's really unusual. People don't usually hang on the side sideways like that. Uh, somehow he likes that, I guess. And, yeah, and maybe uh, if you if you train in the same uh, in, the, in the same position, it's uh, useful for you to, to follow this position in the competition. Sometimes you can you can see here that the coach is right there next to the athlete, and there's a safety diver as well right there. Um, this, like all disciplines in free diving, requires that you have a safety right next to you, exactly. and, and it needs to be somebody trained to know what to do, because you can get into trouble very quickly. And all of a sudden, you you get a little dizzy, and you could black out. And if you have your friend, your buddy who's trained right there with you, nothing bad will happen to you. They you will just come up, you'll start breathing again, and you're fine. But if you're alone, this could be dangerous, very dangerous, and we end up with unintentional drownings, even in the pool with people 
trying to practice this alone. Exactly. And we've even had some prominent athletes, unfortunately, who didn't follow the rules and have had some serious accidents, and we certainly don't want that to happen. So always make sure that you join a club or you get a coach or an instructor like George, and you do learn how to do this properly. So here we go. We're at 3. We're passing the 3.30 mark. We're going to be coming up on four minutes soon. Everyone is just kind of in their middle of their performance here, trying to get into their state of relaxation. You see the this judges. is the most enjoyable phase in the static apnea at four minutes. You have some contractions and uh, the diver reflex is activated uh, in a proper way, I guess. And uh, you feel comfortable with uh, the struggle phase, let's say, with the contractions. Small contractions, but under control. Yeah, it's not that real severe thing that you see. And the more severe they get, the harder it is to relax your muscles because yeah. your back starts to hurt and all these things. And you know, and I think if somebody is feeling cold, it's worse because you just cannot relax yourself. And you know, so we're past 4:30 now. Everyone is still is still down, still continuing. Yes, it's very crucial for your safe diver, for your coach to to give you the. the to give the right directions. Yeah, you can see here that yes. the hand on the back of the Japanese coach, looking at the time, telling the athlete what the time is, yes. trying to give them encouragement. You need to check all the time the movements. Yes, you do. You have to make sure they're not expelling air. If they start to let out a big blob of air, that exactly. could be mean they're in trouble. Sometimes Although, if you're in face down, yeah. if you're an athlete, you don't understand the hypoxic symptoms. So it's very crucial for your safety. Yep, now there comes the Japanese athlete. Let's watch the protocol. He looks good. He looks good. He needs to remove the nose clip. His coach will tell him that. Yes. There he goes. He's okay. A big smile. Yeah. That and relief. Yeah, relief, absolutely. And that yes. looked like a good protocol from here. So we'll see. And smile. See the yes. nice and smile. Again, we'll have, we yeah. will have some hugs from the Japanese team. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah, the coach is smiling. That's and also the safety. Yes, <laughs> safety, the safety. Is, it, it's infectious, is it not? Yes. When somebody smiles, you want to smile back. Look, at they're all excited. You can see them behind. Anna Louise, the judge, is smiling. Everybody's Everybody smiling. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's smiling. And white cards. Yeah, that's great. Anna Louise, give the right. Oh, they're excited. That's great. That's great to see. We have our next Japanese athlete. Let's see. Graziella looks like she has come up. Graziella Rubo at 5.45. Kayusiki Abe, that was a 5.12. We got a little glare here on the screen, sorry. And um, the others look like they're still. Nope, that's. Uh... Let's see who's that? Good. They're checking the time, making sure verifying the time. Good. Yeah. With one female uh, athlete from Japan? Yes. And uh, we're 6:38. Yeah, Yuriko Ichihara. Yes. Let's see if that's still if that's correct. Strong uh, Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if that's correct. We've had a little bit of problems with some of the timing here, but um, yeah, there she is. Let's see how Seven this goes. Minutes. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, let's see. Almost seven. Yeah. Well, it's still going though. Amazing. Maybe the maybe the clock is. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. So we're at seven now, and let's see what the final result here. Krzysztof Dabrowski seems to still be going. Goran Cholak, of course, is still going. That's no yeah. surprise from Goran. Goran is an athlete that sometimes expels air, and so the coach needs to know that. Oh wow! Yeah. The Amazing. Seven Eureka, minutes. Seven minutes for Eureka. That is a huge performance. She will move to the top of the list for that. Uh, that is amazing. Wow, that is great. Her best was 638, so she's improved quite a bit with that seven minute performance. Obviously, the cold water didn't bother her, so everybody has their own thing. It looks like Christoph Dabrowski came up at 740 and waiting for the card. Yeah, Eureka White nice. card. Excellent. Now, let's see, they grant downgraded that to 648, it looks like, for Eureka. That's still a personal best for her, though. Goran's still going, eight still minutes. Going any minute, eight minutes. Yeah. And uh, Peter Durdek, yeah, his best is 8.33. So from um, Slovakia. 
and um, looks like he's got Katja helping him and um, still going. Let's see, Goran's still going. But, um, oh, it looks like he, he has uh, the Polish, is that? Let's see here what's happening. Goran's still going. Goran's still going. Yeah, there's Goran. And as I started it's to really say, good in the static discipline, so you want to increase uh, the gap uh, from Mateusz. Yes. In order yeah. to collect uh, more points. get more points. Absolutely. Yes. It's over when the, in the award that George is talking about, the Natalia Malchanova, there's Goran just coming up in nine minutes. He's perfectly fine. You can see him do a quick protocol there. He's fine. And uh, I believe that the. Uh, it looks like the, yes, on the end there, it looks like the Slovakian athlete is still down. Peter Durdek at 9.30. Or maybe it's a long Try, time. It, well, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like he's still down from here. Really? It's clear at the other end of the pool. It's hard for us to see. But, yeah, oh. he is. Oh, there he comes up okay. now. Let's see how he does. Yeah, and that is really, wow. Amazing. Wow. Wow, and he looks okay. Amazing. Wow. 9.42, that's going to turn some heads. Like nice surprise there's, static, huh? Yeah, there's Gorn looking over there thinking, <laughs> what's going on here? Where'd that come from? That'll put some pressure on Alish as well. <laughs> so. this, this style, it was like, a, let's say, so. Wow, yeah, that's a white card. Wow. That nine is 9.42. I think Gorn was about 9.02 was Gorn, I think so. 9.05 from Cholak. And 9.42 from uh, Wow. Dutitz. That is, that is really, look at Katja is excited. That's Ekaterina Romanova, Russia. Ah, she's giving him a big hug. He's, uh, that was something. Wow, that, that was a surprise. Amazing. I mean, he's 8.33 was his PB before, so I mean, that's over a minute better than we knew he could do. So that'll put him at the top of the list, and that, he has laid down the gauntlet. I'm, uh, that is, uh, look at that, Peter Durdick. That is something. He must be a static specialist. I don't believe we've seen him prior to that, this, this competition. And there's Goran Cholak from Croatia. And... Um, at 9.05, Matt Molina at 8.31. You can already see that make that top six is going to be tough. We're, look, we're, getting, we're looking at some big numbers here, you know? It's getting dyed, and yes. Yeah, so um, that is really something. All right, well, from that's it. From point of view, you need uh, for static apnea discipline uh, a time of uh, 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. Average time of seven and a half. Seven and a half. In order to pass in the A finals. A finals, and this but is. for eighth place, eighth place yeah. finals. Yeah. This is going to be. Um, Chris, come on over here and join us for a second. Yeah, we've got Chris Marshall here from New Zealand, and I want you to meet Chris. Uh, Chris is. We move over. You can get yeah. here. Get in, here. Get, in here. get in here with us. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Chris is here from New Zealand, and of course, we're really happy to have him here because it's a long trip. <laughs> and but he is one of our most uh, avid competitors and has been for a few years. He's a champion in New Zealand. He kind of specializes, I I would say, in uh, no fins. Yeah. yeah, dynamic and no fins yeah, these days. Yeah. Used to mostly be no fins, but my oh. dynamics gotten a little better. Not yeah. quite as good as uh, <laughs> some people. Uh, he also uh, does depth, and he's a spear fisherman, and a very accomplished spear fisherman in New Zealand and uh, throughout the South Pacific. And uh, so I, I first met him in, I think, 2011 at uh, the, in 2009. 2009, 2009 in, 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 the at, at the, in the Bahamas at yeah. World Championships there when I did my first competition. And so he's been with us, and give us your impressions of this competition. Jason, it's getting hard to uh, make a final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, George and I were just saying we just watched we just watched Peter Durdick from Slovakia do 9:42 instead, yeah. and so we've got Goran at 9:05. We've got Matt Molina. I, this A final is the cutoff is just getting to be uh, just yeah. incredibly difficult. It's um, 
I, gonna be something, you know? I was thinking back to my first World Championships in 2009 in the pool and how some of those winning distances wouldn't make A finals anymore. I mean, it's just it's just the uh, yeah. increase, and yeah. I, I, some of it, you know, I think with dynamic, maybe some technology advancement in fins. The fins are better than they used to yeah. be, but yeah, in the other true. things, there's really nothing. In static, there's no, it doesn't matter. And in no fins, you're not using a fin, but uh, it's just maybe training. Uh, just something about, I don't know. It's, everything's just gotten better. More yeah. divers as well. Yeah. More divers. The sport um, has grown immensely, it really yeah. has in popularity. Yeah. So the sheer numbers just mean that you can select from a, a group of better athletes. Yeah, have you um, seen a big increase in your part of the world as well? Uh, not as dramatic as here. Um, we still have something of an old guard mm. uh, of people like Catherine and Dave Mullins, Guy Brew, um, myself to a lesser degree. but. We've all been competing for over a decade. That's the um, we haven't got a a new wave coming through in the same way as Poland or uh, Czech Republic had. Um, so yeah, they've we need a, to push for that. Yeah, you've had a strong tradition with you know world record holders with William Truebridge, Dave Mullins, as Chris said. Dave Mullins was a record holder in the pool uh, and in depth. Uh, and William Trubridge is mostly a depth specialist. He does do some cool stuff when he has to. Catherine uh, Navat, and uh, sh she is very good in static and no fence. And um, but that's true. You haven't had a, a, a new group of younger ones coming through, even though they've got these role models uh, in, right there in your country. Very small country with small population, though. We got more sheep than people. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, so we've started now, and let me go over this list of who we have. In in lane A, we have Anna Marie Christensen of Denmark. Her personal best is seven minutes and ten seconds. In B, we have Shinya Oi, another one of our Japanese team members, at six forty six. C, Veronica Ditkus, that um, George and I were speaking about. Her personal best is eight fifty three. So that is quite impressive. In D, Natalia Domoshenko from Russia, the personal best of six fifty four. E, Dmitry Smentankin from Russia at 6.42, and F, Peter Klovar from Croatia. He's a new athlete, he didn't put in a PB, and uh, we'll have to just see what, what Peter has to offer us today. So, what do you, do you know anything about any, uh, about Veronica or anyone here, Chris? Um, yeah, so Veronica's been to a couple of other world championships, so. I've seen her um, compete before. Uh -huh. um, she's a very accomplished static diver in particular. Yeah. I'm not sure if she actually did dynamic or no fins. No, she didn't. She seems no, to be focusing right she's now on this. very much a specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Anna Marie yeah. is, is um, a very strong, very tall yes. athlete. And she's very good in dynamic as well. Absolutely. So Chris, if you could excuse us for just a minute. I'm sure. going to have Peter come over who just did this huge yeah. static. Let's get a comment from him. Thanks, George. No, who's staying? Who's staying? And so, Peter, we'll get him. So, we've started our next group here. We're at 145. We're going to get Peter. He's talking to his coach, Katja, right now. Peter, would you come over and join us? We want to hear about that big static you just did. Wow. Go, go. Yeah. No, no, no. I want, I want you all I want you all to see. Come over here and be in the picture with us. Congratulations. There he is. Congratulations. Thank wow. You. Did you surprise yourself? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, you just felt really great today. How did that happen? I don't know because she, Katja, I had great a, coach. An amazing Here, coach. Here's you know? your coach, Katarina. Where is I? Where is I? I'm Katarina. here. Here's I'm Katarina. here. Katarina. I'm a good coach. coach. Yes. <laughs> so wow, we were watching, and Goran came up. Goran Cholak. You know, we expected something good from him. He came up just over nine. And then all, we're looking, and from here it's a little hard to tell because you were down in the far lane. And all of a sudden, I said to George, I said. He said, he's still down. He's still going. He's still going. Because we could see Kacho, you know, uh, coaching you. And so you must have just been just feeling really great today. Yeah, you know, I came. Uh, I'm the only one from uh, my nationality to compete here. So I came here so sort of on my own. Yeah. I didn't have any coach. And uh, I know only a couple of uh, fellow freedivers from uh, Germany. Yeah. 
And so I got really lucky to have her. So she was oh. kind of <laughs> accepted the coaching. So and uh, you know you see the result. I was <laughs> that is so exciting. You know that's the thing about our sport, though. You can always get somebody to help you. You know we we want to help each other. We're you know that's we're it, we don't have this rivalry ugly yeah. thing. We do help each other. And exactly. yes, yes, from Slovakia. You know uh, Samo Duranko, who's one of your more famous. Uh, Samo, you're, yeah. he's from Slovenia. Oh, okay, you're from Slovakia. Slovenia. Oh, sorry, he's from Slovenia. <laughs> Mom, sorry. So Slovakia, Martin Zajac's from Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. Martin, yeah. So he's had a tradition of, of good pool, pool competitors there, and uh, but he's not here with us then. He's been coaching Alessia Zucchini uh, in pool and depth. So, well, that's just fabulous, and congratulations. So we'll be really excited to see right now. Of course, you're at the top of the leaderboard. We've got Alice who be coming up in the next heat, who uh, can put in some big numbers as well, but uh, I would guess you're safely into the A final. Yeah, after uh, two days or three days of holiday, just watching that. Watching everybody? Because I'm here for static only. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's Finally great. The, the action, yeah. Well, congratulations thank again. You. Excellent performance. Nice thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And thank you, Katja. All right, let's get back to the action here and see where we are. We're over four minutes. Yeah. Everyone is still going. We've got Anna Marie and Shinya, Veronica, Natalie, Dimitri, and Petr Klovar. From Croatia. As we've said before, the the body type of uh, athletes uh, plays a catalytic role in the performances. And yes. uh, as you saw before, yes, it's a very thin yes, and tall athlete. Yes, very tall and thin. That's the same thing as Gabka from the Czech Republic. She's tall and thin. Eilish is tall and thin. Now we just saw Peter's tall and thin. And uh, yeah, that seems to be maybe the way we're kind of heading here. Goran is tall. Uh, he's a, but he's a bigger, bigger stronger looking anyway uh, not that they're not strong it's just a different body type yeah but um, here we can see the uh, Natalia Domashenko being coached uh, by Yuri from Russia and the coach is extremely important as George was saying very important in this you have to communicate with your coach. Exactly, you need to have a very good partnership with your yeah. with your coach to, to hear very well from your coach to uh, to, re to to reactive in the right time and if you some some competitors like a coach who's very strong and forces them to go further because they, the coach is making an assessment they're watching what's happening and if they think you're giving up too soon they will tell you yes and some people like a coach like that others want somebody just to leave them alone it just depends you know it's all an individual thing Yes, and in the struggle phase, uh, it depends from your, from what you want to hear or what you want to, uh, to feel. So some athletes uh, don't want to feel anything, uh, any, don't, any touch or any, mm -hmm. any words. I remember the first time we, we saw Alish uh, Segura Bendrell, who's coming up in the next heat, and the first competition here in Belgrade, the outdoor one, you remember watching that. He was being coached by Mara Torrealba from Catalonia, one of his teammates. And she kept telling him to come back, come up, and he kept banging on the pool and shaking his head no, because he wasn't ready to come up. So okay. <laughs> she kept saying, come up, come up, and he shook his head no, no, I'm not coming up. We'll see what he does today. All right, so we've got our first, uh, we've got, um, let's see, we've got some athletes coming up now. We're past the six minute mark. That oh. looks like Anna Marie, Anna Marie. she's struggling. She's, oh. she's being coached by Solve. Okay. So, oh, she got it. But she was a little bit wonky there. Looks like her time was 6.41. And um, that's below her personal best, but she may be just being conservative. And it looks like yeah, she came up smile. She came out in time because uh, it wasn't the simplest thing for her. She's waiting now, hoping everything's okay. There's somebody there giving their protocol to judge Monica Hoff of Germany and trying to breathe and get that breath going. It's not so much that you feel you have to breathe, it's that you know you have to make yourself breathe. Because a lot of times you forget to breathe. Your brain is so unclear, you're just kind of standing there in a exactly. stupor. <laughs> so you have to practice making yourself breathe. And like George was saying about this, this trying to keep your body to force that oxygen back into that brain. 
to squeeze you your body, yes. Yeah, because you don't want the oxygen going out into your limbs, as that's where it wants to go. It wants to go everywhere else except your brain. You've got to squeeze and force that oxygen into the it's brain. It's like a manual vasoconstriction, yeah. let's say. Yeah, yeah, and that's a really good. This is a really good tip for, for you uh, all, and maybe in the kind of a medium level of competing, of one of the tricks George has used is very successfully, of trying to get that oxygen going back in your head. And that's exactly what you need. There's, there's uh, Anna Louise talking with her athlete. So we have Shinya Oi at 7.05. Very nice performance from the Japanese athlete. Veronica, Veronica 7.08 has come up. To stop us, stop uh, early. It maybe mm -hmm. feels like that she's safe. Yeah. Feels like she's safe. And that will be enough to get her into the A uh, final. Dimitri at 6.26 with a white car. Petter Clover, he did 6.17. And um, looks like that's it for that group. There's Sasha, the bench clock is over here. He's, you wanna come over and talk to us for a minute? Great. Well, we've got Alexander Benchikov here. He sit over here with me. We got him joining us right now. And Hello. he has a wonderful, deep, resonant voice that you will enjoy hearing. He is from the <laughs> Ukraine. And he is somebody that, uh, just like George, I've known for a number of years. And we've been competing together. And I've been hanging around, or whatever it is I do. And uh, so what do you think about this competition? I like it. Uh, organization is, uh, everything is well organized. And uh, it's a nice pool. Uh, there is only one, uh, one thing what, uh, in uh, in one hit in, in finals uh, there there is only six athletes. Yeah, it makes it really tough. And it will be better if there will be eight. Yeah. But anyway, it's a very good competition. It just it makes it very hard to make that top six, and the numbers are so high. George and I were saying it's such high quality, such high quality. I mean, we just saw yeah. we just saw from Slovakia. We saw Peter just do you know a nine a nine forty two static. Which, 942. You know, he did 942. <laughs> so we've already got that laid down, and now after wow. so after him, you're going to have Gorn and Matt Molina, and you know coming up here, we've still we've got uh, you so, know these we, other possibilities. So it's going to so it looks be like uh, I did the right decision to not compete in static. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. yeah, Sasha and George both decided not to do static this time and focus on the moving events in the pool and. Uh, because we've got these, you know, we were talking about it, George and I were saying, we've got these new static uh, specialists, and they come here to just do static, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, these kind of tall, thin guys, you know, and they, you know, I think they have a special diet, they watch, you know, really are uh, severely uh, watching their weight mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, do a good performance here on breath hold. So for somebody trying to do all three events, if they want to win, uh, Matt Molina and Born Cholak kind of be battling for the overall award, mm -hmm. it's tough because you got to compete against these guys. It's really difficult. Uh, yeah. Yeah, be especially because there is no day off between qualifications and finals. Yeah, there, in the so past we've had that. Yeah. Atlas who are competing in all three disciplines and get to finals, mm -hmm. um, they have six days, six competition in days a in a row. Yeah. It's really hard. Really hard. It's really so, hard to. Uh, <laughs> so you have to make a decision. Then it's it's like when you go to the Olympics and other sports, like somebody like Michael Phelps, for example, in swimming. When they do a lot of events, you kind of mm -hmm. have to pick and choose. You can't. You have to say to yourself, well, I've got this one in the morning. Then I might have another one in the afternoon, and you have to decide: can I put all that effort in and still do a good performance, mm -hmm. or am I going to be absolutely exhausted? You know. Yeah, it's so true. and especially now with these static specialists that we're seeing. It's putting those numbers usually, up there. Uh, usually, any athlete uh, have uh, favorite uh, favorite disciplines. Uh, what they would like to compete or love more some some disciplines. Yeah, and I especially think for me, uh, I I'm doing good in all three pool disciplines. Yeah. But uh, my favorite is I think dynamic with fins. You yes. really like Sometimes that. Sometimes you need to decide uh, yeah. what you yeah. want to compete. Yeah, yes. and I think George likes the dynamic with fins yeah. as well. Even though you're both good in static. And you're both good depth divers, so because I have seen you both compete, compete in depth as well. I was relating a story last night at dinner about you, Sasha, in Kalamata when you were doing a no fins dive and jumped off the bottom plate. Do you recall that? Do you remember when you pushed off the plate? You asked me if it was yes, legal. Yes. You asked me. You know, I wasn't judging, and I don't even know if I. I, I didn't. I think I was competing. I wasn't mm. judging, but I remember he asked if it was legal to jump off the bottom plate. Yeah, I was curious if it's yes. if it's uh, allowed. It, it is allowed, and you did it. 
<laughs> I remember that. First person I'd ever see do that. And, so, and I remember Grant Graves was a judge at the time, and he says, yeah, it's legal. He can do that if he wants. Yeah, so why yeah, not? Because, yeah. you know, when you are doing <laughs> dynamic uh, without fins in the pool, uh, you have uh, you get some advantage from pushing from the wall. Yeah. So why you don't push yeah, from so bottom plate? So push. Now we don't want people to do that because you know some of them they have lights on them. The tags you know can get knocked off. You can kick something, but that I did it really gentle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I don't forget these things. I remember everything, but I, I thought it was I, I thought it was really unique and very creative. So what? Who is this new guy uh, from Slovakia? Yeah. Yeah, this is Peter. Who did 942? Yes, Whoa. absolutely. He just came over here and we interviewed him. He's a very excited, personal best. Katja uh, from Russia coached him because he's got nobody here from Slovakia. He didn't know anyone, and she mm -hmm. offered to coach and got him up to 942, which it's is amazing. It's an amazing result. So here we're and before in. he had the uh, personal best 833. Yeah, so, so it's over like, a minute. Oh, that's huge. It's big improvement. So we're going to come up here. We're getting ready for, for heat number 12. We're getting down to the wire. And in lane A, we have Tomas Janssen of Sweden. His personal best is 713. We have Nicole Edensbo, who is the new Swedish record holder in Dynamic with Finn, which she accomplished yesterday, 206 meters. Congrats to Nicole. Yeah, great for Nicole. Her uh, personal best is 622. And another shout out to her family who's here supporting her. Uh, Lane C, Eric uh, Lachiver of France at 733. Eris E, Mimi's your teammate, teammate that yes. we just were talking about from Greece. Last now. Yeah, 720. I will get to watch. We'll have uh, George to comment on him. Fingers in, crossed. In E, we have uh, Yuzneva Gorlik from Russia at 702. And F, Tetsu Obushu, another one of the Japanese team members at 738. I think that's the strongest of the Japanese. Another Japanese. Yeah, they are really here in force. So let's see. And that um, competitor from Japan is a male, so that may be their, their strongest one. We'll see how he does. Very interesting hit. I think we yeah. will see really close results in this uh, attempt. Yeah, it could be, and uh, it's, we'll see what happens. You know, it's, we've noticed a couple people uh, surprisingly come up very early and uh, disappointing themselves. And uh, we see Valdemar Carlson there. He's going to be at the very end. He's coaching his teammate, uh, Nicole, from Sweden. Uh, mm -hmm. Valley is, is uh, works for us at Ada, as I've mentioned before. He really likes static. It's his favorite event, but he does dynamic, but he prefers static. This is a tall, thin guy, too, Valley. So, uh, and uh, in the next hit, I, I have my team teammate, Volodymyr Satayev, and I should coach him. Okay, so well, well, you, I should go. Okay. But, but I will come back after. Okay, great. Yes. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back Thank in a you. few minutes. And wish okay. him, wish him luck wish from us. Thank you, and I wish good luck to all athletes, Great. especially in finals. <laughs> Great, thanks so okay, much. See you. See ya. See you, bye. Well, we just lost our... Greg? Greg, we, you need to reset us. Sorry, everyone. I'm, I'm sorry I'm saying this on, on uh, live here, but we've lost our feed, and we found out that uh, I figured out at the last two days that the screen has to be reset. And if we don't have our screen, we don't know what's going on. So, but George and I are still here. Yeah. And we're going to be watching Aris here closely. And uh, he's in, in D, so he's... Aris Ioannidis. Yep. Yes, he's right now on the screen. Yeah, with, he's uh, on the screen. Coach uh, from Yanis Kothonidis. Giannis, uh, he doesn't do static either, or he, or not usually, he's more of a no, dynamic guy. No, he prefers guy. to do dynamics. Yeah. yeah, we just got our one of our great die-by guys here to get us back online so we can see what's happening because yeah. we were completely in the black. So there's Valley with Nicole, and uh, she's mm -hmm. using a noodle, which is allowed for support. She seems to be in not much of a suit, which is she's. I guess she, maybe she's Swedish. She doesn't get cold. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Less of a suit than some of the others that that were getting cold. But and she doesn't have any kind of headgear on at all. She maybe she just likes to be cooler. Uh, 
It is individual preference, and if the water's too hot, it's really difficult. Yeah, it's really difficult. Diamond yeah. reflex, yes. Yeah, it's really, really difficult. So, we're coming up on three minutes now. Everyone is still continuing as expected. This could be quite a, as Alexander was saying, this could be a very closely uh, knit group here at the same time in about seven minutes. We'll see how we do when we get to that point. And um, they are just trying to get into that phase. As George was saying earlier, this is the, the time when things are feeling pretty yes, good. Yes, you can see some uh, contractions a little yeah. bit. Yes, this is the you first see, big yeah, contraction Yeah, if you look now. here closely, see George is pointing out right there, right in the lower rib cage. See the little bump? Yes. That's it right there. That's exactly. the contraction happening. And you can, when the severe ones happen, you can really see it. These are just mm. small ones. And uh, it's just the diaphragm saying that it knows you're, you're in dive mode right now. And this is a good shot here to be able to see that from uh -huh. Nicole. And there you can see the platforms that were specially built for, for statics. For so statics, that, yes. Yes, so that you can stand up and you're stable the whole time. You don't want to be rocking on a plastic chair, yeah. <laughs> which sometimes they use in desperation, but and you don't want to have to hang on the side. You want to be able to get your feet underneath you and stand because you can be a little bit wobbly, so you want to have something solid underneath you. And this pool is, um, is too deep to stand up, so we need some help. All right, we're coming up on 4.30. Everyone is still still down and proceeding. There's a little view of the sidelines over there with the judges. And right, there's the coach there trying to, to, relax, the to relax the athlete, yeah. <laughs> doing their best to, they're wanting to put their feet under them and working hard here, the Japanese to get going up. Oh, there's somebody, our first one is up, Yushneva Gorlik from Russia. Looks like she was at 448. It's less than what she probably expected. She doesn't look very happy about that. She seems disappointed. But you see some smiles and some disappointments. That just comes with the game, doesn't it? Oh, this is it? the game, yes. Oh, this this Japanese athlete is really struggling. You yeah. can see him fighting and fighting to try to get through this, feeling very uncomfortable right now at 5.30. So. You have a self-talk. Yeah, don't quit now, don't quit now. <laughs> Let's push a little bit more. Uh, that can, I, I, you, can, you can feel for them because you yeah. know what that feels like. It can, just, it can be just so... And the thing is, in your head, you know you're fine. You just don't feel well. That's the thing. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. You're you're fine. You're not you're not causing yourself any damage. But there's Valley. He's coaching Nicole. She did a good protocol Nicole. there. Mm. Yep. All right. Here comes the Japanese athlete. He's got to get that nose clip nice. off. There yes. he goes. And good. There he is. And smiling. Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Coach yeah. is telling him, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. No, don't want to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, we're doing, they're speaking in Japanese and we're trying to read their lips, but we know exactly what they're saying. All right, so Nicole, she ended up with a 602 in a white card. Yes. Uh, and Aris still going, yeah. Yeah, still going. Nicole, yeah. Go, She's Aris. happy. Valley is happy. Aris yes. is still going. George's teammate, Aris, <laughs> yeah. 640. I think he does over seven, doesn't he, George? I guess, yes. Yeah, so yeah, I think I have him down here at... He's uh, really in a really good shape this year, so... Yeah, 720s is PB. We are PB, almost so. there. Yeah, come on, Aris. Come on, Aris. Keep going, yeah, Nicole's happy now. Yeah, that's great for Nicole. He's seven, okay. Yeah, there he's made seven. All right, let's see. Now it's very see. critical zone for Aris. Yeah, there he is, he's up. Yeah, let's see, that's... Uh, are is going to reach uh, seven and a half. Yeah. Wow. In order to secure the A final, but. Uh, wow. Ah. Uh, oh no. Six thirty-seven. Six thirty. He's already ah, up. He's, was yeah. Already, up. already mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So yeah, that wasn't quite. He was probably hoping he could get, and I think this A final is going to be really competitive. It's going to be mm. tough. Yeah. So. 
And another France get Fran uh, guy from France. Yeah, it looks like Eras Archive is still going. 740. 743. 743. Yeah, okay, this so one. he's done 743. Thomas Johnson, okay. 709. Clear. Looks like. Okay, we're just still waiting for the cards, but it looks like those are the, the times on that one. And so we've got, yeah, you know what your prediction and Ale what Alexander said is about right. There were uh, several of them right around that seven minute mark. Just had uh, Yufneba, she come up early and she got a yellow card because she did not make her announced performance number. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, uh, that happens. There's the French athlete being congratulated. He's happy. So that's Very good. Very good performances from their friends. They're, yeah, Friends they've been office. doing really well. Um, Laurent and had a, uh, de Bocaran had a very nice dynamic yesterday. Uh, he was very pleased with that performance. That was his personal best. He was very happy with that. 250. And uh, he, he got bumped out into the but B final, but he was perfectly happy with that. Almost out of the A finals uh, with yes, an announcement. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes, as uh, George is saying, um, if there's a tie, and for the position, the, the winner is the person who was closest to what they announced. So if you make a really low announcement because you want to go early, you're at risk if there ends up being a tie. Yeah. So, because you get fewer points then, that's how they decide. That's how they make the decision. So here we see our static standings. Uh, Peter is in first place, uh, whom we spoke to just a few minutes ago with 942, amazing performance. Goran Cholak, 905, Matt Molina, 831. Eric, whom we just saw from France, 742. Christophe Dabrowski, 739. And Carol Karsh filling out that last position right now at 729. Mm -hmm. But, but we need to see the last heats. But we gotta come up in these last heats. Yeah, so coming up now, we have in lay A, uh, Volodymyr Istaya from Ukraine. Uh, Sasha Alexander Rubenchikov went over to Ko Tim. His personal best is 7.03. In B, Alexander Maximov from Russia at 7.33. Lane C, Laurent de Bocaran, who we just mentioned, who we had the good dynamic at 2.50 yesterday, is at 8.16. So he has a. 8.16. Yeah, so okay. he has a big thing. Uh, Budimir Buda Sobat from Croatia. I don't have a number on him, but it must be, he announced 7.03, so he must feel confident that he could do um, eight minutes. Our favorites. Our, our co-host that we've been having, uh, that we've been watching, Alish Segura Bendrell from Catalonia, Spain. Personal best, 10 minutes and seven seconds. And in the final lane F will be Willie Hoffman of Germany, and his personal best is 8.33. And okay. I think Willie got a medal in, uh, Turku. He got a medal in something. I just don't recall what it was. Um, but anyway, there's, and you can see Sasha there that was just with us. He's getting his athlete ready, his, his uh, teammate. Yeah. And um, we have to, we have to help each other. You know, there's Eris coming over and he got out of the pool. Yeah. And so we're, we're good here. And, uh, just waiting for this next group. And now we're down to the wire. We've got this group, and then the final group only has two competitors in it, both men and... Yeah, yeah. George is gonna go over and talk to Eris for just a second, and he'll be right back with me. Uh, but um, our last group is Jimmy Fonager Jusesen of Denmark and Valdemar Carlsen, just two in that group, and because it just worked out that way. But um, they both... Uh, have personal best over eight minutes. Valley's uh, nine minutes and uh, Jimmy's at 8.32. So we still have some competitors here who are perfectly capable with their past history of making that top six and bumping out some of the ones that are kind of on the, uh, on the fringe right now. So we'll have to see how they do. As I said, we've got kind of gaps in between here because we never know uh, we can have these long performances at 10 minutes, and we have to make sure we've allowed enough time in the planning ahead to allow for that. So we'll be getting ready to go here. Our next start time is 12.20, so we've just got a couple minutes, and these athletes will begin their breath hold. You can see Valley there laying on the ground. He's uh, trying to prepare, taking some breaths, and getting himself ready. He's in, the, like I said, the final round after this one, and he's hoping to make that a final. 
he has, he's going to be coached by um, uh, Nicole, who just went from Sweden, one of his teammates. And uh, George is talking to Eris. We'll find out what Eris has to say about his performance, how he felt today, and uh, get some inside information. There's Goran Trollak. Goran there, who's at 902. I believe he uh, should be safely into the A final, but with the way things are going, one never knows. Could have some surprises here. And Goran is coaching um, his teammate, Buda Sobat, from Croatia. And Goran, of course, is an expert in static. As I've said, he's won that competition that takes place uh, where he's won a Range Rover. He knows all about static apnea. He's also uh, an excellent in dynamic and a uh, constant weight diver as well. He does depth and um, he was training depth a lot last year and moving up his personal best in that at well over 100 meters. So, yeah, so George is coming back. We'll find out what information he has garnered for us. Find out. Wow. So getting ready to go here with our next group. You can see that this athlete likes to breathe through a snorkel. Some people do that in, as well as in depth. Uh, kind of a holdover maybe from yeah, how so they... Sometimes it helps uh, because you don't have the pressure on, the, on your chest. Uh, with your heads uh, on head the platform, down. yes. And to lay down on the, on the surface, it helps a lot to, to take the, full, uh, the first floor full regeneration. So you can see they're doing some big breaths here uh, through that snorkel. <laughs> it looks, like <laughs> it, looks, it, looks it looks funny. It does. It looks really <laughs> funny. It does. It looks funny. But that must work for him. That's that's what they like to do. So we're at the point now in the competition where we only have men left. All the all the women have finished, and that's because because of physiology, men can hold their breath longer than women can. So. Uh, just worked out that way and so here you can hear the countdown and there they go so, uh, our second to last heat as I said we're coming down to the wire we'll see how how everyone looks and uh, I'm not sure who Alish has coaching him today he was kind of looking for a coach I know and because he is here alone from Spain and, but there's plenty of people willing to help him. In the last competition, I know one of the Americans helped him. Because uh, one does need to have a coach. So we'll zoom in. Maybe we'll be able to see who's coaching him, George. So what did Aris have to say? What did you get a report from him today? From Aris? From Aris, yes. Uh, he was really tired mm. from the last uh, performance. And uh, yes, he, he has uh, contraction, surely, mm. in, this, in this performance. And he struggled enough uh, to, to reach the seven minutes, and he decided to stop at uh, six, uh, six and a half. He told me before that uh, he did almost 15 times uh, six and a half minutes in training. Oh, that's and it's, great. Yes, it's really it's really interesting. Sometimes, uh, even if you if you train a lot in static, sometimes uh, you uh, you hit uh, sooner or later the plateau, and you need to find uh, different approaches to to overcome this. Uh, from my experience back in 2013, I reached my personal best uh, with 8 minutes 46 seconds and my previous record was 7.43. Oh, so you so were able to... I added to... One, minute, one minute with uh, almost no static training. It was really unusual. Yeah, so would you think that your dynamic training helped that? Maybe. Yeah. The, the whole body efficiency and uh, the economy helps a lot. I know that uh, Alexei Malchanov, uh, his main part of his training uh, is in the pool and he does a lot of swimming and dynamic training and that helps him in depth and it helps him in his static and everything else and he has a program that he's developed for that. He and his mother had, had trained, you know, he lives in Moscow, they can't be in the ocean and but yet he's able to go out and do these great depth dives. He's our current world record holder in constant Amazing. weight and it's based on pool training. So it's amazing how you know, fast the body adapts in the, in the depth pressure, and uh, everybody is, uh, is to have the, the proper knowledge in order to train and to develop the knowledge in uh, performances. Yeah, it's uh, it's just um, 
you know, those are the things because our sport is still, you know, new that we're still working out. What is the best way to train? What mm. are the what are the tricks and the secrets? And there's not one trigger speaker. You know, people say, how can I hold my breath longer? How do I get like this? Well, it's all about training, really. It's, there's not a secret way to breathe or anything that that you can do that will instantly get you to an eight minute breath hold. It just doesn't happen. So. And hyperventilating is not the thing to do because then you tend to be, get wonky at the end. So we don't want to tell our new our new uh, students and, and aspiring free divers that it's there's no funny breathing. It's it's just training. So here we go. We're at three minutes. Of course, with this group, we're expecting that you know we've got quite a ways to go. They're just about in the middle, uh, the first really the first third of their performance. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe so. the first fourth. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, no. Yes, yes. We'll have to see how how they're doing. It's uh, but they're just totally relaxed now, just floating there. Do you have something in particular you like to think about? Um, uh, when you try to to hold your breath, like actually uh, in static in static in static discipline, you don't think about anything uh, about uh, out uh, the the out environment. And uh, the best thing that you need to do is actually to clear your mind completely and to, to try focus on your inner feelings and to develop these feelings in order to reach your fullest potential. It's, it's necessary to feel good, even if you, if you, even if you have a contractions mm -hmm. in uh, your performance. Uh, to don't have contractions and to, to feel awful and to feel... Uh, you feel disgusting with this. It's a normal. It's a normal part of your uh, of your performance. So, do you think about just you tell yourself you feel good? I'm happy. I'm good. Do you just kind of give yourself positive reinforcement? Yes, yes. With with the training, it's uh, it's a usual to think to think in this way. So here we are. We're coming up. We're getting close to five minutes. And like we said, with this group, uh, this might be the halfway point. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, they are just trying to move on. There's, there's nothing. There's no turning back at this point. They've got to keep yeah. going. And you can see the their coach there doing a little repositioning so they don't bump their head on the side of the pool. That's uh, Alexander who was just here with us. He's helping his yeah. teammate, and he's watching his watch. There you can see Katja, she's doing the same thing. Just very delicate movements. You don't want to be at all disruptive and you're trying to, trying to help your, your, your friend and teammates stay relaxed and reach that desired time oh. that they're looking for. Oh, this one, that's, Al that's <coughs> Alex. Oh. oh no, gosh. Oh, he'll just be horrified at that one. Jeez, oh, no. don't know what happened. That is, yeah, so he had, oh gosh, that is not good at all. So, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Yeah, I know he hasn't been training as he normally does, but he's going to be terribly disappointed. That is just shocking. It's really sad. He's trying to be consoled there by Kasha. And Alex yeah. has some uh, the same uh, issues in the CMA World Championship uh, two weeks before. Oh, um, something with mental uh, going mental through a, going through kind of a slump, mental slump know. or something now. You never know. That's sad. Okay, so Vladimir uh, is at he's him up at 6:07, and that will be uh, just just past his announced performance <laughs> by one second so he gets a white okay. card just just past it and Alex Segura Vandrell red card because he didn't even do his protocol yeah. he didn't care he's not going to want that result on the ranking so he doesn't care about it he's yeah really disappointed oh that. really disappointed that is just really because he had the he was hoping to be a three-time gold medal winner yes he had told me that earlier in the week and I don't know. That is so. You said at the Seamass he also had trouble, huh? He yeah. Didn't mention that. Yeah. Oh, that's really. He stopped at uh, six minutes and a half, mm -hmm. maybe something around there. So something's not going right. The rest of our competitors are still going. We're at 7:30 now, 
We have Alexander Maxima, Laurent de Bocaron, uh, Boudemir Sabat, and Willie Hoffman. Still going. We're get, getting to the point now where it looks like Alexander has come up. He's giving his protocol. He's okay. Trying to Willie get Hoffman his... at 7 minutes 40. Yes. Waiting it looks for like, the cards. Yep. Looks like 7.40 for Alexander. 7. 56 from Laurent, huh? Yes. <laughs> There's some big breaths there. Yes. Alexander, 740 white card. Willie Hoffman, 739 white card. And uh, Budimir, that, that almost eight minutes. Budimir still going. Laurent de Barcoran is who counting. we're seeing right now. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he got 7.56. Budimir. Is he up? Yeah, I think he's up. No, I think... Now, we don't have anybody who's still down, so there's something wrong here. They didn't stop the clock. Looks okay. like... Budimir is almost uh, finished. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I don't see him, so I think maybe that's not right. I think maybe that, that that he stopped earlier. We just didn't. They didn't stop the clock. Yeah. So from this one, so far we know for sure that Vladimir was 607, Alexander Maximov 740, Laurent de Vaucamon 756, Alex Segarvandrel red card 543, and Willie Hoffman 739 white card. So we. I'm not sure, Budo, that something happened. We've had a little bit of trouble with the clock on some of these dives. So I'm not sure when he stopped. But we're gonna have our last group here. So I we need to see a leaderboard and then we can figure out what these last two are gonna to have to do to qualify in that top six. The last series have the advantage to see the previous performances in order to know what you need decide. to decide. So Valley's getting into the water now, so we're just going to have the last two, Jimmy and Valdemar. And let's see what Greg has for us on the men's leaderboard. And he'll have it up here soon. Oh, okay. And we'll know where we are. We've got our last, our last card here, like Christian is explaining something. Goran seems to be arguing about it. I don't yeah. know what that is, but there seems to be a question of some sort. Don't know. Uh, and it looks like maybe... Maybe it's a white card. I don't know. I don't know. Seem to be some disagreement with, but Corin didn't seem happy with yeah. whatever the call was, so I don't know. We, we didn't see it, so we don't know. Budimir is a current uh, Guinness record holder in static uh, breathwork with pure oxygen. Yes, 24 yes, minutes. yes, that is a, it's, it's not something we do. You're not allowed to breathe oxygen before you do a static or any other event in ADA competition, but in uh, Guinness World Record, they have a separate record. You breathe up oxygen for as long as you want, basically, yeah. and then you do a breath hold. And that increased oxygenation of the blood helps you go a very long time, and Goran got 24 minutes doing that. So that was really um, something. We've had uh, several athletes have done it. For, uh, Stig Alvel Severinsen of Denmark did it first, and then Goran broke his record uh, doing that. But we try to, we have a rule where you're not allowed to, you have to check in an hour before your time and you have to stay visible to the judges so no one would, could possibly get oxygen. And actually, I think the only thing that would really help would be static. I don't think it would really help in anything else. But we do know it does help in static, but it has to be done, I think, right, right away. You'd have to do it right before you're going to do the static. So here we are, we're waiting for our last group. We're waiting for the next uh, result from, from Greg to show us where we are on the leaderboard on this last group, if anybody has made it into that top six. Uh, 
it comes up so quickly I'm not able to write it all down here so I could tell you, but Greg will have it for us very okay. soon. We need to go now. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much. All right, thank you, George. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank great. you very much. Thanks so much. And see we'll you see, see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Bye -bye, so let's see, I'm waiting to Greg's getting the report here and we'll see what's happening as far as our leaderboard goes with our six top six and everyone else, the next six as well for the B final. And we can have a little trouble there with our uh, microphone here and the announcement and the PA system. All right, here we go. Readjustment here in the static for men. And it's shifting around, doing its doing its, its shuffling here. And as, as we know now, Peter Durdick, 942, is in first place. Born Cholak, second. 905, Matt Molina, 831. Laurent de Beaucourt is in 756. Fifth place is Eric Lachivel. 7.45, and in 6, Alexander Maximoff at 7.40. So, in order for these last two athletes to make it into the final, they will need to do a minimum of, you know, they, sh they should be looking at 7.45, 7.50 to get in there, and they would have to bump out those last two, Eric and Alexander, to move up. So, uh, and then the next group, Willie, Christophe, Carol, Pascal, Dimitri, Tomas, and Michael. Uh, Tomas, that the cutoff there is 7.08 at this point for the B final. So uh, we'll just see if they can, if, if either of these two men can make that 7.40. They're both capable of it, uh, but uh, you know, it's every day is different and every situation is different, and we'll just have to see how they feel. We saw we've had some people be extremely disappointed. Things have not gone well for them, and sad. And uh, we'll just see what happens. So it's uh, it's the way the it's the way it goes in any kind of sports or any event that you just can't always predict. You just it just doesn't always happen for you. Things just don't work out the way you plan. But we'll see what we'll see what's happened. Our PA is very loud right now. Please excuse that. We're getting ready to go. Got a lot of banging. Somebody's dropped some metal, something. But uh, they're taking some things down or something. So here they go, and they're starting. And we've got Jimmy Honegor Justa of Denmark. His personal best is 832. And right next to him is Valdemar Carlson of Sweden, and his personal best is 9 minutes and 1 second. So we're, we've, we've established that they're going to have to do better than 740 to make the finals and to be safe uh, in case there's a protest or something like that, they're probably going to want to do a little bit more than that. Uh, if somebody protests and moves up, then um, that could change the results and um, if that gets reversed by the judges under review. That would happen later in the day if that happens and um, sometimes it does and it changes the results. So until we have the final results which come out after protest, that's at 4.30, we don't know for sure. And um, that will give us our, our finalists for the static finalists. We do have the final list, uh, you know, for dynamic. I don't have the uh, order or the lane assignments yet. That will happen tonight, but we'll be starting tomorrow with the dynamic finals, men's and ladies both. Uh, we will have four heats, an A final and a B final, six people in each one for dynamic no fins. And Magdalena Solif is our top qualifier. Not surprisingly, she is the world record holder in that discipline. There you can see Nicole. She's helping her teammate, uh, Valdemar. Uh, here comes, uh, I've got, I've got uh, Alexander, Sasha Bubenchikov back with us again. Hi, so guys. He, can, he can help us on this last one. We've kind of determined the cutoff uh, is uh, 7.40, I believe. I forgot now, I'm, I'm already so confused. It's uh, the last hit. This is the last hit and there's only two guys in it. So. We'll have Valdemar to see. Carlson we got Val from Sweden, Sweden and Jimmy. So Valley's personal best is 901 mm -hmm. and Jimmy's is 832. So they both are capable of making that final if of they course. can do a big 
big, big static today. But as we saw, sometimes it doesn't work out. We have Alish who didn't do well today. He just did for yes, whatever. It's very pity to see how strong athletes, really strong athletes, uh, cut the um, attempt and don't make it to final. Yeah, and well, and he aborted early. I mean, didn't even get close. So uh, I don't know if he got cold or just wasn't feeling well or what. I was uh, talking with him and he told me that uh, it was early contractions and something went wrong at the very beginning. Oh, gosh. that's So he just knew there was no reason to continue. It wasn't going to happen for him today. Sometimes it's just mentally because uh, mm -hmm. uh, when, when some athletes have not perfect dive, Anyway, if, even if it's not perfect, you could make some good result and get to the yeah. finals. But mentally, it's really hard to continue when you know that something going wrong. wrong. I think in static, especially, you know, because there's just it's yes. not it's not like in uh, it, it's not like in in depth where you can say, well, you know what, I'm going to keep going. Maybe it'll all end up okay in the end, or you know. Uh, but it's the same thing like in, I think in dynamic, you know, you mess up your first turn, like the turn goes bad mm -hmm. or something, and all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, you know, because you get reduced a lot of energy maybe, or whatever yes. you've if, done. If I have uh, this kind of situation, I always uh, talking to myself and say, what well, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's don't, uh, don't change my uh, like, mm -hmm. amount of oxygen in my body, uh, so I can keep going and it will be pretty same result. Okay, a little bit less, mm -hmm. but a few meters less doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, it will be a good result. But these guys in final hit, uh, they are putting a lot of mental pressure on uh, Absolutely. Them. They know exactly what they have to do to make the final. Yeah. And they did big announcement, especially yes. to be... Yes, uh, to go last. End, yeah, they did. And you how many minutes they should do to get to finals. Yeah. But it's... Have, it, it gives some advantage, uh, advantage, but as well, it gives some mental pressure. Pressure. Yeah. Sometimes it's really hard to be the last one. And. Uh, well, you should do. know that. Yeah. You did that twice in a row. On your dynamic, <laughs> you went last. Yes. And in dynamic uh, with Finns, I was the only athlete uh, in the pool in the last hit. Uh, I didn't expect it. Uh, you didn't know because that I did, I thought what I did uh, not to not to big announcement. So I I want to be not the last one, but uh, in the middle or in the second half. But it's happened that uh, I was the last one, and it was like I was feeling like a king. Yeah, yeah, all by yourself. And, all you know, judges, all safety and, was on me. And all of us watching you alone in the pool. And yes. it, it was great for us because we could see you really well and we enjoyed it. And we commented that, you know, you showed great, great strength, mental strength and composure because you had to go by yourself. But we also said, well, maybe you liked it that way. And it actually really worked out well for you. So it wasn't a bad thing in the end. You had a very good performance. So, uh, you know, It was strong. a good dive. Um, yeah, and I was surprised because uh, it was quite a long dive, but uh, after that I felt pretty fresh. Well, I think... Of course, I, 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 I was tired, but not so tired how I expected. Well, that says a lot for your training. You're in good condition, your training. Uh, you know, here we are coming up on 6.15. Both of these guys are still pushing through. Would you like to mention a little bit about your side business? I, I'll let you have a little plug here for your business, for your equipment that you make for Freedivers. Oh, if you want, of ah, course. Well, of course, I'm going to give you a chance here to do some yeah, sales. But, uh, no. Jimmy's struggling up, and there he yeah. comes up at 6.30. Okay. 6.30? Is it enough for a final A? Uh, Should no. Should it surface protocol no. well? No. I think it will be white card. No, final A is you got to do at least seven, seven uh, forty five, I think. So. Yeah, but it looks like he was pushing right to the limit. Yeah, it just it was not easy dive for him. No, it was not. Valley is still going, okay. so that won't be enough. So, what is uh, the lowest result for final A now? Seven forty. Seven forty. So Valdemar have good chances to get to yeah. finals. He's got to keep going a. if he can if he can get but through. He's but he's struggling too. 720. He's got to hang on. You can see, uh, you can see his coach there, Nicole, 
trying to get him through this. He's he's pushing. He's got to get to 740. Otherwise, he won't make it. And I know he wants to make that A final. He was asking me where. Nicole, his girlfriend, coaching him, and I think yeah. he she's doing well. Well, there he is. He's made it. 742 is the is the. So if he can get up here, in just a few more seconds, he'll have it. There he goes. All Hello. right, come on, Valley. Ready my breeze, breeze. <laughs> <laughs> he is determined. That is determination. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep breeze, breathing, breeze. keep breathing, Valley. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Shaking, having a little hypoxia wow. issue. He managed it. Yep, he managed it. That comes from training, right? Getting yeah. through that. Yeah. Recovery breathing is a very important part of the dive. Yeah. And sometimes even experienced athletes uh, don't care about uh, correct um, recovery breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's something that you have to make yourself do. Now, Jimmy, as you saw there, he got a yellow card because he was under his announced performance because he had a big one and he didn't make it. So he got a yellow card, he'll get a penalty and points there. But it looks like Valley's going to be white card and he will be into the finals so that will be that was what his main goal was here in this competition was to make that a final so that's good so here we just have one more second please uh, as i said uh here's our here's our results here for the so, men and you can see valdemar is fifth yeah at 747 is, is the cutoff was, uh -huh. so Peter uh, qualified strong at 9.42, Goran second at 9.05, Matt Molina 8.31, Laurent de Beaucourant at 7.56, Valley at 7.47, and Eric Lachivet at 7.42. Then there's our next group will be the B final. So Alec, uh, at Sasha, just give us a quick little thing about your business just so our, our viewers can hear about what you have for sale and these great uh, lanyards and things you've been making. Yeah, it's begun, everything began, uh, I think, in 2012 when uh, when I was starting depth diving and uh, I couldn't find uh, a proper lanyard what, uh, what I would uh, satisfied with. So I created one by myself and started developing it, like uh, make some small improvements uh, here and there. And at some moment uh, I was quite happy with, with this model and did few for my friends and for uh, some other athletes and went to some world championship and there, uh, there the Slanyards uh, like disappeared like uh, Atlas uh, buying them like hot, uh, hot pie like, yeah. um, other Atlas uh, also liked uh, this model so I started thinking hmm, maybe I should make some bigger bigger bunch and uh, yeah and it's, uh, in this way, it's everything started. Then uh, I start uh, making not only liners but standard belts. And now we have a uh, really good uh, Fidaim buoy, inflatable to see buoy. It's very really light, so it's uh, really uh, comfortable uh, with, uh, with good er ergonomy and really, uh, really uh, durable. Yeah, it's good for traveling because it's lightweight and um, you can see all products, uh, what uh, I'm doing, um, on tobefreeequipment.com. So, did, to you, be free equipment, uh, did you get that? tobefreeequipment.com. Well, thank you very much everyone for joining us. We're done for today and you can see Valley there celebrating with Nicole. Congratulations and to Valdemar right, and all other athletes who did it to finals. Uh, well done, guys. And everyone who got a white card and those that didn't, you know, next time, you know, it's just how it goes. But thank you so much for joining us. And tomorrow we'll be back with our finals for, for Dynamic No Fin. And hopefully I can get Sasha or someone else who is available to be my co-host. And we look forward to seeing you then. Probably tomorrow and uh, after tomorrow I'll be busy. He'll be water. busy because he's, <laughs> he's one of the top qualifiers yeah. in the dynamic. And we've got several men come in that I think will be trying for a world record, which is going to be really, really exciting. So, uh, But come back tomorrow. We're going to have the no fins. And Alex will be here with me then. That'll be great. Thanks yeah. so much. Have See a great you day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you. That was great. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah, it's fun. It's my first experience.